with election season coming up, tomorrow is Americans primaries. Okay, I'm not a political channel anymore. I do philosophy and I guess you could say spirituality, but really it's about a relationship you're having with the bubbles and your consciousness. So the world and yourself and then the bubble you create, right? Your little safe haven. It's hard to create a bubble. It genuinely is. And most people don't know what I mean when I say that. I have a podcast about it if you guys are interested. But forming your own bubble is about actually understanding yourself enough to create a space for yourself that everywhere else feels like you're a visitor, but in the best way possible because you have made your own home. And I don't even mean just like home is where the heart is, though that's a part of it. I mean, the world is literally yelling at you 24 seven, telling you how to feel and think, telling you how to look, telling you how to be good when it itself is struggling to even maintain its goodness. And so I think it's important for us to have a reality check, especially this election season coming up and especially with everything happening in the news, just to remind yourself that like everything is a construct. Everything is exactly the way humans en masse want it to be because it's what we have produced. We are the producers of the results. And en masse, this is what we've produced. This is the world we have produced. And we have to accept that. Until you accept that this is the world we as humans have produced en masse, we can't actually decide to be someone different. As long as you blame somebody else for the way that the world is, and not your participation in the world. And I don't mean literally like, oh, you bought X thing. Oh, you went to X store. Oh, you supported X politician. I mean, it's the way you think. The way you think about the world will, you know, will be your karma, will be your environment, will be what it is. And so I can't, in one way, be angry at the world for being the way it is because the world is the way it is because people exist in it. And at the same time, when I say I wish the world was different, what you're really saying is I wish people would change so I was comfortable. And you have to make peace with that. You have to make peace with the fact that every time you say I wish the world was different, you are saying I wish people would change to make me more comfortable. It's a good way to think because it's how we all think. So it's not bad. You're not bad for thinking that way. But it is also the road to hell is paved in good intentions. So I want us to be extremely cynical of ourselves and our investment and other people changing their lives to make sure that we aren't actually screaming, I wish I would change myself, right? Like internally, every time we find something wrong with somebody else, we're really finding something wrong with ourselves. whether it's our inability to accept them for who they are, our inability to accept the world for what it is, or or we see a part of ourselves in them that we know we need to change, right? It depends on the relationship you're having with it. But usually when we don't understand other people, we're saying, I wish you were a different way so we could get along. I wish BreadTube was different so they would be my friend. I wish my friend would change so we could hang out more. I wish the world was more peaceful so I could walk around safely. I wish men weren't so much like this so I could be free. I wish women weren't so much like this so I could be free. I wish religion didn't exist so I could be gay and not be afraid. I wish I could be uh, straight and be religious and not feel like I am behind the times. I wish the world was more like me so I could feel safe. There is nothing wrong with being safe. There is nothing wrong with wanting to feel that way. There is nothing wrong with any of it, right? The thing that ends up being wrong, ultimately, is when you decide that you have the right to force other people to change so you're comfortable, right? So when the world says... um. When the world makes a prescription, again, I need, I wish people were different. And I I think you should be different. I think you should be this way. You are saying in some way that you think someone else is like bad. I was listening to um, Lav and Andrew Wilson talk about whether or not women should have babies. And they're like, should 19 year olds have babies? And again, no one should have children. And I put that in the chat and somebody said, oh, Brittany, you must be being satirical. There's no way you believe that. And I was like, I do believe that no one should, 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 should have children. Not that they can't, not that they shouldn't, but but that they should have children, that they should have children. Andrew Wilson thinks you should, you are obligated. It is your obligation as a human to keep the human species going. He thinks you should have children. 
Laugh thinks 19 year olds maybe shouldn't have children so they could live their life. And I'm saying no human being is obligated or should be obligated to force a baby into the world or themselves to go through that process. And by the way, when I say people, I generally mean women. Even though we're acknowledging trans men can have babies and non-binary people can have babies, we're really talking about forcing women into having children. On behalf of who? Who? Society? People? Men? Who is saying women should have babies? Right? The Andrew Wilsons of the world. Because he thinks it's your obligation. Instead, if I was to make a prescription, I would say it is better for a world to be free and for choices to be made in joy than feelings of pressure. It is better to feel the natural cycle of sacrifice than to force sacrifice on people that feel like a chain. It is better to live a good life by working hard than to have to work hard to barely have a life. It's all about the balance. So Tao Te Ching, um, this is the book of the way. This is the version I have. Excuse my dyslexia. Okay, alleged dyslexia. Okay. 57, good environment, good government. Already. <laughs> the government is best administered with virtue. The army is best directed with strategy. The people are best ruled by giving them freedom. How do I know this is so? By the Tao. The more restrictions are enacted, the poorer the people become, the more soldiers patrol the streets, the more disorderly the city becomes. The more officials are crafty and cunning, the harder the people are to control, and the more laws and order are issued, the more thieves and robbers abound. The wise ruler says, if I practice restraint, the people will reform themselves. If I love peace, the people will become peaceful. If I am not greedy, the people will become prosperous. If I practice simplicity, the people will remain simple. Okay. Tao Te Ching, right? And there's like a whole bunch of these for everything you can think of. But I was thinking about government because that's what politics is. We've talked about this before. Politics is the relationship you're having with this construct we've created to govern. Philosophy is the relationship you're having with knowledge and introspection, right? Morals and ethics, this obligation we hold one another to, right? This construct of even morals and ethics come from individual values grouped up into a community and pushed onto other people through an agenda. Okay? So when you're thinking about your own morals and you're trying to prescribe them through ethics to the world, you have to consider what that means. What does that look like? What are you obligating people to? When someone says, you have to pick my side, they are asking you to now demonize somebody else. The moment you pick a side, you are now focusing on someone else as being the enemy. I have no enemies on YouTube. The world doesn't believe it, right? Because people don't understand that even if you have no enemies, you still have boundaries. You're open with boundaries. People don't understand that they take on a role of being a quote unquote leader in the space, but won't take on the responsibility of being said leader. I will be your president, but I don't have the responsibility of it. I will be your leader's invoice, but I don't want the responsibility of it. I will be, but I don't want the responsibility of it. I will choose to force a child into existence, but I don't want the responsibility of it. Now, responsibility is subjective. And this is why in philosophy, we ask ourselves, what is a wise man? A wise man is responsible, but a wise man is humble through the responsibility of his obligation to be a good man. And where does it come from? And that's the question. When I say there's capital T objective truth, you know, only God knows. I don't mean literally God. I mean that thing that exists and we know exists, but we have no access to. And that is life itself. We don't have access to all knowledge at all moments. We don't know what people's real intentions are. On the macro, macro, micro, macro, going all the way, zooming out, we're all little like balls of energy crashing into each other. Zoom in, we're societies that have evolved over time and societies now go to war together. And the individuals in the society might be innocent, might not be, depending on whose values we're judging them by. But now they, as a collective, build societies that now go to war. 
And then they scream to the heavens, somebody pick my side. Somebody prove to me you're on my side. And if you don't, you're the bad one. If you don't pick my side, you're evil. You hate innocent children. Of course, neglecting the reality that there's innocent children on both sides. And then when people hear both sides, they get triggered because in politics, both sides, both sides is a sort of like dog whistle. Oh, everyone's evil on both sides. But literally, philosophy will teach you humans are the same on both sides because we are all the same on all sides. None of us are different from one another. I am you and you are me. We are sort of a shared consciousness, but more than that, we are all shared energy, which might sound woo woo to you, but keep in mind, if you join my bubble, you do not cause violence and you are against violence and you are radically accepting of people within their diversity as long as everyone has boundaries. If you choose the other bubbles, not only are you picking a side, but you're literally, no matter what side you choose, absolutely killing innocent children. And again, my side allows for choice, which means it's not perfect, but it doesn't always guarantee kill children. Okay? Because my side, the only time you would kill a child is in abortion. <laughs> okay? That's the only time. I don't believe in violence and I don't believe in war. And I think if we've gotten to the point of war, it is a sign of where you are in history and evolution where you cannot talk it out. So you have come to the bottom line of war and you have now massacred millions or thousands or whoever, depending on the time in history, innocent people. Though, of course, if you zoomed into their macro lives or micro lives, maybe they're cheaters, maybe they're adulterers, maybe they're tax frauds, maybe they're liars, maybe they beat children, maybe they're sex offenders. But in war, everyone is innocent until we zoom into the micro. In times of privilege, in times of peace, now people aren't bad because they're on sides. They're bad because they lie, because they do these micro things, because they might be racist, because they might be these things. In times of privilege, we call people evil for not being on a side like we do in a war, but for the little differences that we have with one another or big ones. And so the point again in philosophy is to say, we are the same. The point of pol politics is to say we are not the same and we are not the same to such a point that if you side with my enemy, you are now my enemy. But in philosophy, who is your enemy if we are all the same? So as we watch today's Kidology video and she talks about bread tube, I don't know what it's about yet. I haven't really watched it, but I have an idea, right? The title kind of says it. Let's remember that this is a bubble of politics and politics has a winner and a loser. And anytime you have winning and losing, you have deceit. You have lies and you have pride. To say I've never done anything wrong, to say I've never spread misinformation, to say that I've never failed, to say I am consistent always, is to say that I am inhuman. Never trust a human who literally thinks they have never and are not currently in flaw. We are all dysfunctional on a spectrum. Even now I am causing a flaw somewhere. If you really think about it, there is no way you in this moment do not have something you are working on. And if you don't have anything you're working on and therefore you think you're not flawed, you're just not being introspective. An introspective person, I believe, knows that they are always flawed, therefore always working on something, therefore always in the wrong as well as being in the right. You are all things at once. All things at once. Always. It's just on the spectrum of where you're at. We love Kidology. Love to talk to her. Um, we love to criticize BreadTube. We love that over here. But mostly I just want to say this. Um, it's a shame that we all can't figure out how to get along. And it's a shame that we can't agree on how to positively move the world forward as a group. And because of that, I acknowledge the diversity amongst us. And I say that this means humans are going to human more than anything. That even amongst a group of people who generally agree with a direction, we can't manage to work together. And a lot of that is because of micro nuances within our own value systems that make it difficult for us to work together. And the truth is, even after we accomplished a group activity, let's say world peace, we would still have not world peace because then the nuances of our diverse singular preferences would breed conflict amongst us, right? And that is the irony of existing with other people on a planet is chaos is so a part of everyday life that this idea of utopia, world peace, where we all get along is basically a world where people don't exist. 
or very, very, very few people exist? Maybe. And even then, I doubt it. Okay. Press play. Ooh, ASMR. Okay, yeah. kid. I'm sick, but I'm not going to let that stop me. Last month, the notorious anti-racism scholar and professor Abraham X. Kendi announced that he was laying off most of his staff at the Center for Anti-Racist Research, Ooh. CAR. CAR was founded by Kendi in June 2020. Kendi's center was gifted 55 million US dollars, including 10 million from Twitter's co-founder, Jack Dorsey, Jesus. with the mission to, quote, build an anti-racist society that ensures racial equity and social justice. Now, why I reference Kendi's anti-racist research center is for two reasons. When I think of, quote, novel ways to understand, explain, and solve seemingly intractable problems of racial inequity and injustice, I cannot help but think of another phenomenon which blew up around about the same time as Kendi's center's founding. A particular caliber of content creator emerged on YouTube YouTube, with a very specific intent, message, and style. Their videos were not only exciting, theatrical, and unusually long, they also offered hope in a seemingly hopeless, pandemic-ridden zeitgeist. Like Carr, they claimed and were seen as a novel way hey, hey, hey. I like cat block though. For people to understand. Oh, I got stories about this. I got stories about all these people. I have only good things to say about cat black. <laughs> Stand, explain, and solve seemingly intractable problems of racial, sexual, oh. and, and general inequity and injustice. The second reason <gasps> T1J2, he's very nice. Him and I have had good inter interactions. The reason why I mentioned Kendi and Carr is because of a crucial point. Since its founding in 2020, Carr hasn't produced any original scholarship or research, like Damn. at all. Despite over $50 million in funding, something that is unheard of in mm. the social sciences and humanities, the center has recently faced allegations and an investigation into financial mismanagement. And this financial mismanagement includes Kendi himself approving a mortgage loan of 600,000 US dollars to an unknown and unnamed professor. This loan was- a Is this gonna be another like BLM story? Or name any, name any organization? Oh my gosh. Approved only three months after Carr's founding. It turns out that the unknown and unnamed professor is in fact Kendi's brother-in-law oh. and was used by him to pay for his five million dollar penthouse. <laughs> Human's gonna human. Human's gonna human. I gotta get it. We can need to make a song for that. Human's gonna human. Oh, so beautiful. I fucking love it. Let me tell you, I fucking love it. Mm. Mm. Also, Candy's brother is YouTube's global content policy lead, so that's a thing. Meanwhile, Kendi appears to be emerging relatively unscathed from all of this. Recently, he signed a contract with ESPN. Yes, ESPN, Whoa. the sports network, okay. and is a presenter on a series about tackling racism in sports. He was also gifted 625,000 US dollars from the MacArthur Foundation in 2021. And he also charges 20,000 US dollars for any speaking appearance. Now, where have I heard somebody else trying to charge 20,000 US dollars for a speaking appearance before? So, Destiny, I know you're watching this. Destiny. Destiny. Oh, OFD. OFD signifier. I will come on your stream. <gasps> Whoa, this is big news. After you donate 25K, to community oh movement. this is like didn't this happen already and then he donated something builders here in atlanta to address the stop cop city movement if you drop 25k i will come on your stream and we can have the most banal 
argument. Ah, there it is. Although financially unscathed, Kendi's reputation will probably... That's pretty funny. ...probably never reach... That happened. Didn't ABBA and Destiny donate? I can't remember. I missed, I missed that arc a little bit, so I didn't get all the, like, details the heights that it did in 2019 to 2020. Because at the end of the day, Kendi has proved himself to be a sellout. Now, personally, I don't care too much about selling out. Individuals have mortgages and rents to pay. They have families to feed and, of course, little luxuries to treat themselves to in order to get through the difficulties of everyday life. I don't care too much about selling out because my apolitics, or politics, depending on mm. what you want to call it, really encourages me to see every individual for the individual that they are and is ultimately all about the i can't stand how kidology's royal accent makes her sound like she's an expert on everything because of my chimpanzee brain believes it that's so funny yeah the way people talk really like for me i like it i like confidence in people and i also see it everywhere on the internet name every man every man on the internet talks like they know what the fuck they're saying even though they don't <clears throat> look at andrew tate Every gamer boy literally talks with such, you know what I'm saying? And to be honest with you, it's also part of like secretly their confidence. Like Z has done her research. She feels pretty fucking confident about herself in this video as she should because it sounds like the research has been done. Discord says they donated to the police. Yeah, I thought they donated to the police. So you know what I mean? <clears throat> That's so funny. FD thinks he's worth 25K. Well, I think the point is, is that... Uh, they could definitely afford it, like in some aspect, but also um, FD is sort of untouchable in a lot of ways. Like people want the progressives to talk to them. That's what I'm saying. Destiny's not a progressive, otherwise they would talk to him. Like he's not what I call a leftist progressive. He's a Democrat. He's a, he's a liberal, which is great. We love it. But I'm like FD's like a progressive. He's a leftist. Contra points and all those people are leftists. Um, and so I think like, because they refuse to engage, if they raise money for a good cause, that's sort of a win-win for them. And it will bring the views in. I think if FD and Destiny spoke and it was a genuine like debate, I think it would bring in the views. It could even be worth 25K. I mean, Destiny said alone, he gets 80K of AdSense on his YouTube videos a month. So look at it as a business investment, right? The individual. However, the underlying politics of BreadTube makes the very selling out, which it appears to be doing more and more so, inherently contradictory with the very tenets of their entire politics and with good video essayism. The devolution of BreadTube in the past. See, why did Destiny donate 10K to the Atlanta cops? I missed that whole arc, bro. I missed all the details. I think, yeah, Abba donated too, right? Like, why was that? You know what I mean? Like, that's silly. Like, that's what I mean. They're not progressive. Like, Destiny isn't progressive. Why would you donate to the cops if you're progressive? Like, I'm too progressive to donate to cops. Like, there's no way. You're not taking my money. <laughs> I am not giving the police one more fucking dollar than I have to. You know what I mean? The fact that he'd give $10,000 to the cops is just to, that's what I mean. They're not authentically about values. They're not it, like, it's obviously like spiteful or whatever, right? Discord saying it was out of spite. There's no way my values wouldn't let me do it. It's one thing to support people who are cops, right? I support families who, you know, their fathers or mothers are cops. Like I get it. Not all cops are bad people, but the police to give 10K to the cops no, ma'am. No. When I get those phone calls, oh, um, uh, Brittany, we'd love you to donate to our local. No. So again, when I say like who is progressive, this is what I mean. You know what I mean? Destiny donated the money to opposite charities Signifier was asking for. Lame all around. Yeah. Like well, how silly. <clears throat> okay. Abba didn't do it. He photoshopped it. Abba's too good with his money. He wouldn't give it to the cops. To the literal department? Jesus. 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 That's so funny. That's so funny. That's what I mean. Guys, no offense. And I'm going to say it again. In your bubble, so politically, to 
conservatives, destiny is progressive. To progressives, destiny is liberal. To me, he's a liberal, right? He doesn't follow very similar tenets. Even to some progressives, I'm too liberal. But compared to destiny, I'm too progressive. Like just to be to play the game of like where you stand politically. Like I am right of FD signifier and left of destiny and definitely left of ABBA, right? And so like there's that line. Brittany, ask him, ask ABBA. Okay, I'll bring it up when I talk to him. Because I don't know. I missed that whole freaking arc. That's so interesting. Last year was probably inevitable. This devolution is what happens when moralizing the world comes at a cost that not many people are willing to pay. The cost of humanizing your enemies, the cost of putting the political cause before profit making, branding and views, as well as putting the moral principles you claim to align yourselves to before drama, clout and the clique. So let's take a very deep dive into it. But hold up, as a YouTuber, I have to pay my bills. But I also have to tell you about something that pay will your bills, revolutionize girl. your media consumption experience. Not for the better, but for the best. And that is why I am delighted to introduce to you and to thank Ground News for being the sponsor of today's- mm, Hold on. Um, you know, I would say the difference between liberals and progressives, for those asking, is more the philosophy of why for the politics. So liberals, let's say, and this is a huge generalization, liberals sort of believe in the system and believe if you work within the system, it will, it will, the right things will happen. And then the system works within the construct of liberal and conservative. And it holds like pretty basic views. So like a liberal, I'm going to really like water this down. A liberal would say, I believe in gay marriage and gay rights. Oh, I believe in trans rights, for sure. As a liberal, I believe in these things. As a conservative, I don't believe in these things. A progressive would say, the system's never going to work for you, but we're going to learn how to dismantle the system or talk about it, or at least hope it is. And we're saying the whole thing needs to be reformed. And because of the why, we're going to get involved politically. But we don't just support gay and trans people. We support all queer people, sex workers, uh, like... um underprivileged and discriminated against minorities. We support gender fluidity. We support all of the weird minorities on our side, right? They support the magic of gender, which I love. And then these people support the magic of God, which I love less. And then everyone in the middle is sort of like, oh, I believe I'm a liberal. So I believe in gay rights and women's rights, but it's very simplified. It's very much like because it's bad and progressives, they, they have a whole philosophy that comes into it, right? So it is one of those things where it's hard to say what it is unless you're in certain bubbles because even the progressives, like I said, look at me like I'm way, I'm way too conservative, which is so funny. Somebody even came on my channel and was like, is this a girl a conservative? And I was like, oh, OK. And again, like, OK, even oh, my God, I'm going to talk to Tom Foolery if he comes on while I'm streaming. But he said on his stream today, yesterday, he was like. Um, why does everything, unless you're not a sex worker, unless you're an escort. And I was like, what? He was like, even porn stars aren't sex workers. And I was like, what? Like in a progressive bubble, sex workers falls under the umbrella of people who in some way have content that is focused and specifically for the consumption of adult audiences and some sexualized or adult manner, Right. The idea that you'd have to be an escort to be a sex worker is so funny to me. But in Tom's bubble, sex worker is like a modern way of saying prostitute, which is specifically selling sex in um, in like person to person. And I was dying laughing listening to this. I was like, this is so interesting. I can't wait to talk to him about it. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Right. And that is a, that's like a liberal view. That's like, if you talk to a liberal and you said, what's a sex worker? They'd say, oh, a prostitute. If you talk to a conservative, what's a sex worker? Anyone who shows their body off for money, including booby tube streamers, right? And it's so funny. I love that. Like, I love that. But that, okay, that could be a thing, right? So again, ugh. I love that. Why, how do they come to the conclusion that you're conservative? No, I think, I can't remember which video was it on. Wait, which video was it on that they're like, is this girl a conservative? I don't remember. Oh, I was covering Brett Cooper. I think because I was covering a conservative, they're like, oh, no, are you a conservative? 
And um, I'm just nice to everybody because I humanize people because I'm not hateful. And so I think that was I was humanizing Brett probably. But anyways, it's not to make fun of Tom or to say Tom is wrong or oh my gosh, it's to say this is what a bubble is. A bubble is having a man literally say you're only sex worker if you're specifically an escort. Tell that to the government. Tell that to my civil rights. Tell that to the voting. Tell that, tell that, tell that, tell that. You know what I'm saying? Like, tell that to the world that tells me I'm an OnlyFans girl, so I sell my body for sex. So I'm a sex worker. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what are we talking about? And even models to conservatives are sex. Like, if you're really a conservative in a certain bubble, they would say, like, booby streamers are sex workers, which to some extent, there's a conversation we could all have about that. Like, I think Amaranth is a sex worker, but I think Amaranth might not call herself one, but she's an OnlyFans. So I think she would agree on that. But Jessica Negri, who has an OnlyFans, might be considered a sex worker or a sexy cosplayer, which is not exactly a sex worker. And then that's the overlap, right? And so that's what's interesting video. In the past two months, Ground News has transformed the way I see media in two crucial ways. Let's it's go, expanded girl. where I get my news from and informs me where I'm getting my news from. Ground News is a website and app that has been created by a former NASA engineer and it gives you a data-driven, expansive and entirely transparent way to engage with and consume the news stories that we sponsor? are bombarded by. I would basically say that ground news is the i'm putting a uh z's link in the chat Kidology's link in the chat ultimate way to make sense out of chaos and this is so important in our social media era where misinformation and partisan lines really taint the experience of trying to understand the world around us i personally always found the experience of reading newspapers incredibly daunting and never ending but with ground news let me tell you i used to love to read the newspaper as a kid I would go straight to the politics section since I was literally like 10 years old and I would just flip it open and I would read everything. When I said I was obsessed with politics as a kid, my parents loved it. They thought it was so cute. I was obsessed. You know what I mean? Obsessed. I love the newspaper. For every story, you get a concise and specific breakdown of every news outlet. That is a breakdown of specific news outlets reporting, their headlines, their political bias, and how reliable a source That's they are and who owns them. You Ooh. can sort and filter stories based on location, bias, factuality, and time, or whether or not a story is behind a paywall. So for instance, if I'm reading an article, I can simply and contains all the data about your personal news consumption. You can see how your news consumption evolves over time. Here, guys, get 30% off from the Vantage plan. Use Kidology's code. You can filter out your favorite topics and experience a diverse array of perspectives. And personally, that's something that I've loved doing. I found numerous new news sources, which I did not even know existed. So all I have to really say is, what are you waiting for? Go to ground.news slash Kidology or use my link down in the description. Yeah, some people consider drag shows and burlesque sex work, yet not the... Oh my God, isn't that... See, I don't consider burlesque or... Drag shows sex work necessarily, but I think people who do burlesque and people who do drag, some of them do sex work. See? Interesting. Like default, I remember I went to the international finals for, or no, sorry, national fi finals for burlesque for New Orleans a few years ago. And the guys behind us were like, I wonder how much tit we'll see, dude. Oh my God, I fucking love these hoes. Like they were literally denigrating the women. And I was like, get out. You can't come. Like you can't come. Burlesque, like this burlesque, is obviously not for your sexual benefit. It's for the art. People's mothers are here to see their kids perform. This is not about sex. Leave. Like, I almost wanted to be like, you can't come in. If you're going to talk about the artist, like, you can't come in. You know what I mean? But, ugh, people. That's what I'm saying. War is awful and killing people is awful and everything is bad. But on the micro, like, I can't stand being in the room with these people who can't, like – see the difference between sex work and people taking off their clothes and nudists and all the different people who exist in the world. Oof. Description box. This is an incredible way for you to consume your news and to help support. Ah, uh, do you have any videos about your whole political journey and how you thought during those times and how you moved beyond it? Also, I need that sweater. Yes, ma'am. Links in the description. Yes. Um, My videos, Brittany, through the levels. 
I think Brittany through the levels will probably explain it. I think I'm trying to think if I have a specific one about politics, but it covers it. Like if you look up Brittany Simon through the levels, I'm pretty sure that covers it an independent business that is working tirelessly to make the media landscape more transparent, digestible and clear for readers. Thank you so very much to Ground News for sponsoring today's video. And now let us get back to it. Bread tube are what can be considered the unofficial thought leaders of the new left. The rise of bread tube can be linked to the widespread leftist backlash on reflection to the Obama presidency. A main Obama. characteristic of the new left is their commitment to progressive historiography from the 2010s onwards as a way to explain the perceived failures of the Obama era. Progressive historiography dominated in US universities from 1910 to the 1940s. Back then, it referred to a heavy focus on the significance of class conflict in determining the course of American history. Progressive historiography resurfaced again in the form of the New Left, with one caveat. According to the New Left, progressive historiography is central to understanding the pervasive structural faults of American society and politics. However, for the new left, it isn't class conflict that determines the course of modern history. Rather, it is the systemic historical oppression of marginalized groups, and particularly those with intersectional identities, that has determined the course of modern history, and which, crucially, Barack Obama failed to address in the ways promised. Because he's a liberal. Because Barack Obama is a liberal. Barack Obama is a liberal. He's not a progressive. Listen, I voted for Barack Obama. Okay, my second year, because I was a Republican the first term. <laughs> my second term, I was a registered independent. I voted Barack Obama second term. And um, I voted for a solid middle of the ground liberal president. Okay, somebody's going to be pro-gay and pro-trans, but also like is a little tough and also bombs foreign countries because well that's what liberals do so um he's a liberal and we love that for the king you know like that's how he is that is what it is and also you know how michelle obama talked on her this is a fun fact because i had friends in politics right because like i was gonna be in politics okay uh i knew that michelle and barack were on the verge of divorce like years before her book came out it's so weird but it also makes sense like if you knew that, like a bunch of people were like, oh, my God, they're the best couple ever. And in my head, I was like, they were on the verge of a divorce before the election. They were going to get divorced. And of course, you know, you only talk about it with certain people because, you know, no one's going to believe you. And also, like, how do you know that? None of your business. And then Michelle put it in her book. And I was like, oh, we know, girl. I know, girl. I know. Crazy. But that's what the world is like. Politicians, everybody, the bubbles are all just you and me. People with problems, people with strife, people with intimate relationships that aren't the greatest, people who are trying their best, okay? So just like we're all people, okay? All the way back in 2008, the narrative goes that Obama- They did not divorce. They're still married. Obama, who ran as a leftist populist, sold out. Well, he's not, he wasn't, right? He wasn't. The new left and later bread tube emerged as a reaction to this and have been picking up the crumbs ever since. Unlike the new left of the 1960s, today's new left are not so much in allegiance with traditional academia as their predecessors, nor are they as readily aligned to traditional revolutionary activism, as were black radicals such as Malcolm X or mm. Huey Newton. Love Malcolm X. See, I love Malcolm, but he also ran into the same problem, which was the bubble problem. He ran into the same problem, but he was way, he was so interesting, like so self-aware about the bubbles, but he could only, he only knew about the bubbles around him. Like he never asked himself, what if I was Malcolm X? Not because uh, this, I'm denying a slave owner's last name, but because I don't even exist in the universe. I'm just like a ball of energy called, that we call Malcolm. Like what if Malcolm X took the X because he was acknowledging like some sort of Zen instead of a relation to the white man. See how Malcolm still, as he was getting away from the white man, 
moved his life and became famous with a name because of a white man. He chose to deny his name, give himself an X, and still made it about white people somehow. Because that's how bubbles get you. That everything you do isn't for the consciousness. It's for the identity that society has called you. And because you haven't actually gone to the macro. On the micro, Malcolm was fighting a battle that was justified and interesting and very complex and beautiful and like lovely. His Some of Malcolm's takes are just fire. Only in relation to the bubble. Not in relation to humanity. Their allegiance is to, quote, the soul of the internet. For instance, many of today's bread tube creators were either educators themselves or left academia in order to <sighs> pursue their online careers. The internet was recognized by the new left to be the new marketplace of ideas. It was the domain in which to connect with a far larger and intersectional audience. This, at least before 2020, was largely the labor and domain of new leftist streamers and there were I know her oh I know them of doing things was and remains to be markedly different. Vosch contends that the soul of the internet pines for ruthlessness and vitriol. The problem, he says, is the online left before me was very academic, but what motivates conservative thought online is ruthless, aggressive content. It's contempt. That's what drives them. So when all the lefty YouTubers are these nice, foppish, queer characters, it doesn't really speak to that demographic of insecurity your white men. So I'm loud and aggressive and I want to show people that you can be all these things without being part of the problem politically. But something happened mm. during the pandemic. Notably, most people were stuck at home, indoors and with a lot more free time on their hands. A recent large-scale survey revealed that worldwide social media usage increased by an astonishing 20%. Okay, hold on kid. Sorry Z. Do you guys see the new Uncle Iroh emoji? Does that look clear or should I make his face even bigger? Like take away more of his chest? Because I feel like his face kind of blends into the background. Or should I put an outline? Maybe I should put an outline around him. What is also noteworthy. Wait, I'd also like some bread tube love? lore. Oh, bread tube lore. We should. Mm. We should, we, I haven't hopped back into the leftist bubble in a long time on my channel. Maybe I should. Worthy to mention is that although social media usage has increased among all groups, irrespective of political affiliation or race, white liberals are the political affiliation and racial group to spend the most time on social media. They oh, spend significantly more weekly hours on the internet, are significantly more likely to list the internet as their primary news source, and significantly more likely to consume news from and be politically active on social Social media. The pandemic, the precarity of lockdowns and the modern economy, as well as an audience significantly more politically active and aware online, were a perfect recipe for what was to come. What was to come and what came was audiences exhibiting a willingness to do what was previously unthinkable. In an age of TikTok, short form content, blood oh sports, and garish bread tube streamers, audiences True. were increasingly willing Kadisha. to sit through feature length video essays. These essays broke down and applied popular critical academic theories to keyword popular. As much as progressives, especially video essay progressives, like to tote themselves as being um, a minority and they are, they are. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, if I'm, we're being truly authentic, it is still the minority opinion to be primarily progressive. Not to be liberal, but to be progressive. And the issue with conservatives and all these groups is like, we don't even know the differences. That's why Destiny's audience is fucking dumb and thinks he's a progressive. It's why Destiny's even like dishonest in some ways. But he, he's right politically, he's still going to vote more progressive. He also isn't technically progressive in like philosophy. But FD Signifier, Khadija, like all those people, they really believe in their spirit. Khadija's a they them. Like Destiny was a they them for like a hot second was like, actually, I think that's bullshit now. And I'm like, that's that's fine. But that's what I mean. Does he think it's actually bullshit or does he think it's bullshit because his bubble was kind of like, what are you doing? Or was it just not authentic to who he was? And like, you know what? I, that's the question, right? 
But Khadija and FD, like they live it out in their life as well. To uh, to the, as far as I know, like as far as I know, their actual lived life is also progressive, which is different than just being politically sort of moving left. So this is sort of important, and that's why I specify progressives different from this. Now, I don't know this to be true, but from my lived experience of the white leftists or progressives, I trust them far less than the black ones. Like I trust Khadija and FD Signifier more to be consistent with their online life and their offline life than I could trust like ContraPoints. But that's also because I know I knew ContraPoints at one point in my life behind the scenes. Like I've been to her house. We had a moment. So like I know more about that. I know that it's not as consistent because it's hard to be consistent behind closed doors. Right. Because and it always gets down to like the way you handle interpersonal relationships and the way you actually respect like consent. Right. That's always the key point to me is how do people value consent is how I can usually tell how progressive they are. Because if you ask Khadija, like, do you value consent? They would say yes. And they would probably act it out. Like if I want to date with Khadija and I would say like, hey, you need to be sober before we have sex. I'm pretty sure they would agree that that's probably reasonable to value consent. Maybe not, though. Maybe behind closed doors, they would say, actually, I have sex with unknowingly drunk people all the time. Time and I possibly run into a problem of like breaking their consent. I don't know. Who knows? But from my instinct, I'm going to say that's probably true. But I don't know if that's my bias because I've had such a bad like interaction with white progressives that I don't know if I just trust the black ones more because I feel like they're probably more aligned with their values. But of course, they're also YouTubers and they're also queer. Like Khadija is queer. So I trust Khadija to be more consistent with their values than somebody else. So maybe that's a bias, right? We have to pay attention to those details, but they are all very specifically different. And so again, there's like an expectation though to still perform accordingly with the progressive bubble, which is why some of them didn't like my takes because they're like, I don't get you. Like you seem progressive, but then you say certain things and that's the nuance part. Philosophy people don't belong in politics. Philosophy is all about nuance. It's all about humanizing people and politics is about demonizing people. So of course, even though I love Khadija's content and I do, and they do a very good job at humanizing people, they also demonize. Because that's what politics is at the end of the day. To everyday life examples. And these essays overwhelmingly fall into three subgenres. Firstly, pop culture criticism, particularly analyzing and critiquing fashion trends, modern beauty standards, films, and popular shows. Secondly, race, particularly analyzing and critiquing racism, bias, and modern culture's effects on black people. Sorry, I mean exclusively African Americans. And thirdly, transgenderism particularly analyzing and be careful z i'll protect my trans people okay i'm gonna get motherly right critiquing here critiquing transphobia bias and modern culture's effects on trans people contrary to vorsch's assertions nice foppish queer characters were gradually garnering hundreds of thousands if not millions of views and subscribers they were and are still lauded as authorities on the subject matters they cover of course these weren't just a girl sits in front of a camera talking video essays these were full-length well edited theatrical Beautiful. masterpieces Gorgeous. they involved i've also had lunch with her philosophy too randomly collaborations she was very nice actually i have nothing bad to say about her it's outfit changes and set design except maybe the whole rent debacle that happened that was crazy the aesthetic and vibes were as important if not more important than the message the theatrics were enticing and caused a stir mainly because of how mysterious and idiosyncratic these essayists were viewers wanted to know everything about them they wanted to read the books they read they wanted to dress and talk the way these essayists dress and talked. I mean, 2020 to 2021 was ContraPoint's most productive year. The pandemic saw BreadTube explode, transform, and rebrand almost overnight. And so I think it is necessary to distinguish between BreadTube then and BreadTube now. I find so true. K uh, Z is Kidology Z is so right. This is so specific. They have changed so much. And the streamers, the streamers coming in change the ecosystem completely. Mm -hmm. Functionally, the most prominent left-leaning content creators aren't people who talk politics exclusively. They are people who will talk about culture issues, pop culture stuff, you know, uh, human interest 
topics with a left-leaning spin. I always use this guy as an example, Curtis Connor. He's a TikToker, YouTuber, huge content creator, progressive bent to his videos, but he doesn't exclusively talk politics. In fact, he doesn't really talk politics, not directly. He won't talk about feminism. He'll talk about weird guys on TikTok being kind of weird about women, you know, like he won't talk mm -hmm. about uh, like the incel movement. He'll talk about, you know, what is with people in this dating advice? You know, it's it's a way of delivering the idea, the message without alienating people by directly codifying your politics. I think that's a very smart way of getting people introduced to your ideology. What has happened since the pandemic is a growing divide between leftist streamers and. Hold on. I actually wonder this is a model I should pay attention to. Because I wonder if that's the issue with the psychology terminology. Like when you start psychology terminology, it attracts a certain audience, but also makes people think you're not talking to them if they don't believe in therapy or if they think like you're a therapist, they'll treat you differently. Like instead of saying like, oh, that feels kind of gaslighty, you would say, oh, that feels like you're lying to me or that feels like you're not being honest with me, which would be more universally acceptable. So I actually think that's that is really good. A part of me wants to do that. A part of me because I do think like I use psychology terms a little too um, colloquially, colloquially, blah, 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 blah. you know what I mean? Like I use it too bubbly. And so I need to be more careful in some ways. I want to switch my language to be more universal and more honest. You know what I mean? So I think that's interesting. Leftist video essayist. When I refer to BreadTube in the rest of this video essay, I am going to be referring to the latter. Leftist video essayists and their social commentary allies, as well as what I like to call them tagalongs. And I don't mean this derogatorily, I just mean it sort of analytically and as an easy term to refer to what are ultimately not necessarily like the social commentary channels, but are sort of like them. Just like JCS Criminal Psychology and Sunny V2 have their clones, leftist video essayists have their tagalongs, who yep. also largely emerged from and since around 2020. Clones emerge whenever particular kinds of content styles and types hit that. So I don't like, for the record, hold on. I don't watch any of these people. They're too Gen Z. Like, this is Gen Z leftism. I cannot vibe, like not my people at all. I'm more on the Khadijah, FD Signifier, like uh, Destiny Vosh. Like if I have to be in leftist politics in any capacity, I'd rather listen to Hassan than any of these people, obviously, because they're making social commentary that I think is just like, it sounds like high schoolers talking even more than we sound like high schoolers talking. Like we sound like college kids talking they sound like high schoolers talking i can now watch these people this is for young people also largely emerged from and since around 2020 clones emerge whenever particular kinds of content styles and types hit that sweet spot in the algorithm and that is precisely what happened with breadtube during the pandemic that is breadtube video essayists leftist streamers or debate bros are considered pariahs by bread tube now unless of course these no the ukulele girl was not a bread tuber though that was bread tube of the gen zers watching her i watch a lot of hassan's videos i don't watch a lot of hassan if i'm gonna be real with you but i do love leftovers i do everyone who says they don't have chemistry you're insane everyone who's like hassan and ethan don't even have chemistry you're literally insane. It's so good. <laughs> Debate bros are Hassan Piker, the streaming world's favorite champagne socialist. R slash breadtube has essentially shadow banned all debate bros. But what I've typically mm -hmm. seen is breadtube, that is video essays on a mm -hmm. spectrum, ranging from hardcore purity testers to cliquey cloned social comment. Oh, I just learned sort of who this is but not really is moralizing about anyone like i know this face and i think he was just in a scandal of sorts about something papa gut was covering it who isn't in the group to leftist feminists and oh i love her 
I love Khadija too. To sectional feminists, all the way to what I have dubbed tagalongs. The only reason I talk about bread tubes growing tagalongs is not to dog on them. Do what you need to do to make money. Do what you need to do in order to get those views. I talk about them because they really expose something when it comes to bread tubes descent from its pandemic era peak. In mm. short, it is impossible to reconcile progressive historiography with bread tubes clout, success, money making and branding fixation. And tagalongs are the most obvious example of this impossibility. Take for example, Zoe Unlimited. I don't know who Zoe Unlimited is. Have we ever watched one of her videos on the channel, guys? I mean, cute setup. I love it. Honestly, my there was a time when my podcast sort of looked like these sets and it did get like more viewership, especially girls. But I did notice that the audience was more into lighthearted topics that felt deep, right? And I think they're going to grow out of that too in the next five to 10 years anyways. They'll probably end up here, to be honest. But I don't know this girl. I don't know this one. A perfect example of a tagalong and the growing commercial value Two million tag along of being affiliated with bread tuberism. Zoe has a history in social media marketing and by her own admission knows what sells. Okay. The evolution of her Can she hit me up, please? Tell me, girl. Oh, I can't make content like this. See, I know this content. I'm not this person. I can't. I can't invite this audience into my life. This is girl audience, but this isn't girl thinking audience. I'm so sorry. Girls with these thumbnails, like they're young. They're thinking, but they're young. They're like 15, 14 to like 21. I I I know this audience. I can't have it. Never mind. I don't want your marketing skills. Like, see, I cannot market to people that young. I would feel like the old fuddy duddy that's like, hi, um, have you ever thought that Zara isn't the end all be all of life? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean. Her content is a perfect example of how influential these ideas are mm. when it comes to... I can't. These thumbnails, literally. But yeah, they, they work. They really work. Not real world change, but to career advancement. <sighs> Roughly a year ago, yeah. Zoe switched Fire. up her content from diet vlogs and advice to what can be called woke video essays on modern beauty stamps. I am a boomer. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Videos such as you're not ugly, you're just poor, all rely on arguments Ooh, that true. are true. That is true. She's not really bread tube though. Bread tube though, it's like fashion and beauty related feminism stuff mostly. Um, that's the question. Are feminists bread tube? Are they leftists? Are they no? You're right. Not all feminists are leftists. You're right. That's true. They are too crowded. The thumbnails, I think so too. But that really works. People love that stuff. I can't handle it. Like, I'm just like, this is very crowded. I'm not clicking on this thumbnail. But they love it. They love it. The thumbnails are so focused on bodies and how they appear. The topic is so tiring. That's why they're not leftists, right? Because they are focused on feminism girl bossing, which is usually pretty, like, liberal, which is totally fair. I have a podcast coming up about that. Am I a girl boss or am I just coping? Oh, I can't wait. Are characteristically bread tube. In August, Zoe, who at the time. Yeah, this isn't. Right now, I think Kidology is saying. Yeah, because like she is identifying. If she's identifying that bubble, the bubble we just talked about, the girly bubble, with leftists, I think that is incorrect. They're definitely liberal feminist girl boss women, right? Like they're not. Fem they're not. L feminists are not leftists. Some le leftists are feminists, right? It's some intersectional feminism is related to f leftism, but it's not the same as like modern day girl boss feminism, right? Already had over a million subscribers on YouTube, received an investment of a million dollars from a creator contest funded by investors like Logan Paul, Paris Hilton, and the... Oh, wait, Rock Paper says if the thumbnails and titles are clickbait, hence the views, but when you watch it, it's usually a lot more nuanced. Ooh, okay. Ooh, okay. Noted, 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 noted. BreadTube is so specific to me. I thought it was long form essays talking about leftist topics and socialism. I think it mostly is. Mostly. But then there's the new Gen Z gen generation too. Chain smokers. The mission of the contest is to equip creators with whatever they need to grow successful businesses. Mind you, at the time, Zoe had over a million YouTube subscribers. 
like for they're not Bernie, you're just not familiar with content like Zoe's. Is Zoe like a communist, like a socialist? Is Zoe, is she making, because Zia is saying she's making content about how to like make money, which is not a leftist concern, right? It's very much made through the lefty lens with a lot of capitalism critiques. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. Cool. I might check it out, actually. That sounds interesting. When I think of BreadTuber, I think Vosh. I think that's a BreadTube streamer. But hardly. Vosh isn't very well liked by the progressives that I follow. See, I follow progressives that won't let Vosh hang out. <laughs> Thousands of dollars worth of brand sponsorships, <sighs> a high paying job in marketing, and hundreds of thousands of views monthly. Like Trolley Bolly says, it is difficult to argue against what can be seen as Zoe benefiting from both sides of the diet beauty. Yeah. Yeah, I would be interested to watch her, like, diet stuff uh, and see how it's not and how it's leftist. ...and social justice conversations. And therefore, she is a good example of a content creator incorporating all the arguments and aesthetics of BreadTube into their brand and content. For instance, you can make a video about how toxic glow-up culture is, prefacing that although it can be good, there need to be good reasons behind it. Oh, wait. Kay is saying I heard her say she used to do dieting advice. Hold on, what's her name? Chloe, what is it? Chloe, what? Yet a few months later, your reasons for promoting glowing up can be because you are going to name? Coachella. Zoe's video essays are all about modern society's allegiance to privilege and how wrong, detrimental, and unfair Olivia it is Munn? to her especially name? her young female audience. Yet this is what Zoe said about the process that <laughs> she went through to be awarded no, a ew, million- No, not Olivia Munn. I know who that is. No, gross. Who, no offense. Who, she's lovely. Who is, I just like her zoe unlimited thank you dollars as a youtuber with over a million subscribers at the time i basically heard a hold on we're gonna take a detour sorry we have to do it now congrats your race is trending oh tiktok keeps you poor okay so these Everyone. are very leftist titles we love that popular videos smaller waist in a week it's interesting that she's still posting these videos as things you should watch, though. So I did this seemingly too good to be true one minute exercise every day for a week to slim down my waist. Yes, you heard me right. One minute. One minute. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> they lie beneath today's. Feels like fake science since you can't. Feels like fake science. Okay, that's fine. Oop, my bad. Wait, go back. My bad. I love so fake science. I did this okay. Everyone. So that's, I'm interested that her popular videos are still the focus. So see how I'm calling it out? I'm sorry. Like I, just private shit that I don't feel like shows my value anymore as a thinker. So she's saying, she's saying that she still believes in this content. That's what she's saying by putting it here. That is what she's saying, whether she likes it or not. She organized her page so weird. She organizes her page really weird. So her normal videos are just trending like here. Like a wise woman called Barbie once said, you can be anything. What you are essentially saying is that you can change your race and you can't change your race. I'm Korean, you know, people need to accept that. Oh, Ollie. Like the laws of gravity, there are certain rules that persist in this universe, such as the first law of thermodynamics. A body at uniform motion will remain in its original state until and unless if an external force is applied to it. The McDonald's ice cream machine is never functioning. All the people who subscribe to this channel are intelligent and sophisticated. And you, yes you darling, can change your race anytime, anyplace. <laughs> Everybody looking at me, but... 
Wow, what a time to be alive. I'm just so blessed that being Asian is trending amongst these TikTok users and the RCTA community. Comes next fall when another race trends. Guess I'll just have to color or bleach my skin and listen to 100 subliminals a day. And so let us talk about. <laughs> wow. Okay. I mean, the editing is fun, right? But like, I get it. a new trend on the internet. What is the race change to another or ethnicity change to another community? The difference between culture appreciation and fetish. Okay, like I can already tell, like it's a vibe. Like she's got her, she knows what she's doing. The editing's good. The vibe is good. People love to hold their microphones. I get it. I actually like the aesthetic a lot. Um, okay, like I'm not mad at it, honestly. Uh, okay, I have no problem with this about the contest and then on the last day to apply for it i realized oh wait do you guys want her channel link there are 12 hours left i was like i might as well i made a short form video and then submitted that and little did i know that's privilege if ever i've heard it and this isn't necessarily something bad in and of itself but it is something that over time fails to add up to viewers who see you leading a life that works contrary to your message and branding zoe is that girl who she makes video essays against she criticizes quiet luxury whilst her brand and aesthetic are all about mm -hmm. selling quiet luxury to her viewers. It's interesting that a scathing criticism of Zoe's content received more views than her reaction to it. I think this is indicative of viewers, especially Zoe's audience from one or two years ago, mm -hmm. not only growing up, but also recognizing contradictions in the arguments and actions. And this Ooh, is she grifting? This is something that is evident in other Oh, I know this girl. The more staunch bread tubers views when compared What? Comparing them from two years ago to Okay. To now. I only mention Zoe because she reminds me of what some of the original bread tubers have become as a result of her brand strategy over the past year. I don't consider Zoe a true diehard bread tuber, but her audience's growing recognition of the message not aligning to the person's own actions and life is an endemic issue of bread tube now. What is becoming increasingly apparent is that whilst bread tube criticize capitalism and even brand themselves as anti-capitalist mm -hmm. they are disproportionately benefiting from it take this example from a conversation or Ow. more so a talking down to i had with fd signifier fd and i'm new to the, i'm a baby like this I think I, I don't know if I don't know if that's understood. Like I'm, I'm I started journeying left after Obama, and I probably learned more in the last two years of content creation uh, relevancy, I should say, than in those first four or five years of of reading Marx and you know trying to understand things better, having certain conversations. Um, so I'm a baby leftist, right? We've moved so far right, at least in the in the U.S. In the U.K., there's different things, um, but we've, we've moved so far right in so many ways that you know uh, there, there's been actual analyses of like Barack Obama's presidency to show that he's more he was he was basically Ronald Reagan like. I feel like I heard you say. Like you don't know if you're ever gonna be able to save up to get a house. And that's that's a lot of people. Like I'm I'm probably Wait, what is she trying to prove right now? I kinda lost the plot. Because I could totally see why Barack Obama would be like Ronald Reagan. Like they're very similar more than they are different. So the last section of millennials politically that comfortably bought a house. To a progressive. You know, because and I only got my house <laughs> because there was a recession. And Obama was giving out, you know, um, 
loan stipends or whatever. FD said that Obama's policies basically make Obama the equivalent of Ronald Reagan and are basically what made FD himself more extreme in his leftist politics. Yet an hour later, FD said that he was comfortably able to purchase a whole house because Obama was giving out loans. And this was initially... Yes. Wait. Oh, I'm dying to see what kid's point is because I'm like, yeah. That when doesn't I, contradict itself. I started to think and realize that things in BreadTube were just not adding up anymore. That's not a contradiction. Why does anyone think that's a contradiction? That's not a contradiction. Wait. Why does anyone think that's a contradiction? That's kind of funny. Why? I don't see that as a contradiction. Oh. What is Alongside Brent sectarian rifts, a second discourse within... Yeah, wait, I don't get that. That doesn't feel like a contradiction to me at all. Because look, when you observe a person and you say, and again, take it out of like politics. Uh, how do I say this? Okay, you have a liberal and a conservative and you're a progressive. And the press, progressives go, um, yeah, oh, uh, I have a kid and their name is Zezer. The liberal goes, oh, that's so interesting. My kid is named Susan and she's a her, uh, her, guys, help me. She, her, she, her. Oh, my, and the conservative goes, um, I have a boy and a girl and they don't have anything other than he, him, she, her, she, her. like there is no Zezer, nothing. Like I'm not into it. So the liberal is judging silently and thinking like, my kid's never going to be Zezer, but I'm not going to say that out loud. The progressive is in giving their kid the Zezer. And then the conservative is like, I need to make it clear to you, like, this is not happening. So Reagan is like, this isn't happening. I'm not giving it to you. I'm not going to help you. Barack Obama's like, I'll help you. But like, you know, because it makes sense. But also, hmm. And the progressive would like someone to help them because they actually agree with them. So the liberal like amuses the non-binaries. Let's say like, oh, that's sweet. That's cute. Look at you being adorable and doesn't actually identify with them. And the conservative openly goes, I don't like you. That's why progressives look at liberals like they look at conservatives, because at the end of the day, it's not good enough for them, which I think is probably the reason the world won't get along, because it's never going to be good enough. Which is why I say, like, I don't need it to be good enough. I need you to mind your own business. Like, I'm good with good enough. I, I should say I'm good with good enough. You know what I mean? I don't care, dude. Just, like, everybody respect each other slash move on. Or everybody tolerate each other and move on. Right? I don't need to hear every day that you disagree with my viewpoint. And at the same time, like, if you help me because it's the law, I don't care. But I don't care if you help me because, like, you actually believe in my cause. Right? <laughs> Hold on. She makes a point about uh, bread to being elitist and disconnected from the actual feelings of the black community. She's elaborated more. OK, sure. FD's opinion on Obama changed after he got his house to one that says Obama wasn't good enough. Yeah, but all of that makes sense. Like, that's what I mean. Like, that's the nuance. I would argue that's more nuanced. Right. To say, like, all of these things are true at once. I don't know. Pushing and sponsoring lenders to offer money to people with really bad credit and other candidates who wouldn't usually qualify does not give Reagan conservative at all. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's keep going. In the community concerns BreadTube's unbearable whiteness. Although BreadTube advocates for social, political, and economic equity, various members of the community have raised red flags about the marginalization of content creators of color in BreadTube spaces. For example, in her video, Why is Left Tube So White? Black BreadTube creator Cat Black described how interest in her work depends on valuation. I really like Cat's work. Cat's really, she and I are good. We're like, uh, YouTube friendly to each other. So like, I have nothing bad to say about Kat. I engage with her content. I like it. We don't always agree exactly, but we agree pretty closely. I would argue I rarely see a video of hers and think like, what the fuck? Like, usually I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense to me. And I think she's a good example of somebody who comes from like a really transphobic family and handles it with really good open with boundaries um, philosophy. So I really like that about her. Um, yeah. 
expectations of it by white audiences. Acknowledging these points, a user commented on a r slash breadtube post titled, Where are the black breadtubers? It's hard for me to go on YouTube and hear from all these intersectional people, and yet the tubers of color have maybe 10,000 subscribers at most. It's a huge disparity between the two. The subject of why breadtube is so white has been covered heavily since Cat Black's heartfelt, very important video on the matter, especially as it personally oh. pertains to her Cat and other black leftist YouTubers, social commentators, and video essayists on the platform. The reasons why I resonate so strongly with Cat's video essay has oddly evolved, especially since mm. the beginning of this year. At the beginning of this year, I made a video in which I argued why the online left needed to do better in understanding the plight and the concerns of not only the people they claim to represent, political minorities, but also the people they need to realize their vision of a more inclusive world, the majority. People really mm. seem to get where I was coming from, and not just conservatives or contrarians, but also liberals and leftists themselves, who felt that something wasn't quite right anymore on the online left. My video mm. was doing quite well for the first few days, and then this happened. Um, okay, no, what, let me, some, oh, some more transphobia. Oh, so let me oh, just, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me real quick. <laughs> so, what, to be fair, to be clear, I'm calling it right now. JK Rowling is a full on transphobe. Like, everybody doesn't know this, but there's like no defending JK Rowling's stances. She's like full on transphobic, right? Like, at this point, I have given JK so much time to pull back her transphobia, and she just refuses to do it. Even this week, I saw more from her, and I'm like, JK Rowling, you're so exhausting. She's just way too transphobic for me. So, like, full on going to say right now, JK Rowling is fully transphobic, and there's no way around it. There's just no way around it. She has given zero, like, zero indication that she is, like, not transphobic. So... We're going to be getting, there's going to be a lot of transphobia and trans like antagonistic dog whistles, dog alarms, just so like as we continue, understand that is a huge undercurrent of this video, right? There's also going to be some, some anti-blackness. Mm. Um, what else we got that's like trigger worthy? Uh, let's see. What general, you know. general trigger warning. For bigotry and shit is probably going to piss you to fuck off. Like general, general, general liberalism. Like, yeah. General liberalism. General and by the way, this is why most progressives also want to talk to me. Because I fall into a camp of like, uh, I don't mind having the conversations. And I don't think, like I never adhere to the bubbles conclusion. So I would just say that really importantly. Like I don't fall into the bubbles conclusion on the matter. But I agree that the bubble is experiencing it. I agree that white men feel like they're the most discriminated group uh, in the U.S. Because in certain bubbles, white men only feel the criticism of being a white man. But that does not objectively mean they are the most discriminated group in the world, right? I understand that for some black people, they feel like they live under a tyranny of whiteness and they will never get ahead in life. And that is very true for some of them. I agree that some women feel like the patriarchy is always going to be in control of their lives and they're never going to get ahead. Fine. I agree. Like, I agree that everyone has a real lived experience a true lived experience within the bubble. But again, my work is going to take you outside of all the bubbles and just to look from almost like not above, but like away, like not above, but away, just away from all of it because you're only these things because of the construct of the bubble. So as long as you fight the construct for living, you adhere to the construct and you're acknowledging it ex its existence. It's why gender politics could have gone so much easier if one, the religious would acknowledge that they also believe in gender dynamics with like Jesus and God and stuff like they believe Jesus was a man, but also God has no gender like your God has no gender, even though you call him him. He has no gender. But then if I call her a girl, all of a sudden God has a gender. So like they have nobody has an understanding of gender. Right. It's like very interesting. So, again, like the religious need to get on board and acknowledge they literally believe in something that has never been proven a God. And the gender people can acknowledge that we believe in a gender thing that is not as tangibly proven or understood, but it's still as real as a God is. And if God gets to exist, gender certainly should exist. Now, obviously, having personal gender shouldn't impact the world too negatively, but having a belief in God, 
all the negatives, just negative, negative, not always, right? And because of this way of talking, like I'm never going to be invited to hang out with bread too, which is totally fine. Like, honestly, guys, I get it. But at the same time, I understand why they're fighting the fight, right? But you can't, none of these groups are ever going to be valid outside of the bubbles. They're all moving you towards another bubble, right? Everyone is moving you towards another bubble. And that's what's important, right? That's the thing is no matter what, it doesn't matter. No one has the higher ground here. What is the construct you are moving people towards? I would prefer a construct that gave us more leverage and more freedom away from believing beliefs are objective, right? But they can't. I want that. I want a sweater. Buy one Raiders cat. They're for sale. They're for sale. Merch is officially for sale, guys. Mugs and sweaters. Let's go. Thank you guys so much in advance. I really appreciate it. I really do. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Liberal <laughs> Liberal <laughs> oh my God, the right. volume. So this is this is the fundamental frustration I think I have with most with most of this whole video, right? And I'm glad that we got to it here because then we just talk about it. When when you when you live when you're trying to do things like not even necessarily like be an anti-fascist or do anti-fascism right when you're just trying to resist all of the various bigotries that there are which i would argue is anti-fascism but i just want to make sure there's a distinction between that specific thing and what i'm talking about it requires you to oppose those things right it's not about like oh we need to hear them out we need to hear them out like no like that ideology I mean, you could argue that it's literally just fascism, but they overlap with fascists enough that the line is not them. Like, no, you, you, you don't polite fascism out of existence. All right. It's not a debate. Nah, you, you suppress that shit. You fight yeah, that. I'm not. Sorry, this, I need video to hear that again. Fascist like, oh, we pose those By the things. way, people, sorry, people who, who use the word fascism, I'm going to ice tune out. Nobody uses that word correctly on the internet. I don't know what it means anymore. I've heard people use fascism as like people that are mean and bully. Fascism as like dictator related governments. Fascism as like overbearing majority onto minority. Like I don't even know what fascism means in different bubbles. I have to like recontextualize that word depending on who is talking. But like, hold on. Right. It's not about like, oh, we need to hear them out. We need to hear them out. Like, no, like that ideology I mean, you could argue that it's literally just fascism, but they overlap with fascists enough that the line is not them. Like, no, you, you, you don't polite fascism out of existence. All right, it's not. A you don't polite fascism out of existence. What is the fascism they are talking about in this context? Because again, fascism, like it's not a word that's uh, used universally in every bubble the same because everybody's allegedly a fascist. <laughs> what, what's a fascist? <laughs> Is that what Aiden Ross said? What's a fascist? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so political movement that emphasizes extreme nationalism, militarism, and supremacy of both a nation and the single powerful leader. So, okay, when talking about J.K. Rowling, we're not really talking about fascism, are we? Fascism is doing mean, uh, mean real good. Okay, got it. Uh, uh, so, yeah, again, like, uh, oh, yeah, I don't control the railways or the flow of commerce. Barbie quote for this. Oh, that was such a good quote, man. Okay, so in this bubble, fascism usually does mean people who oppress people in a majority position. Yes? Is that how they use it? The leftists right now? That's like kind of how they use it now? I think so. Not a debate. Like, look, I thought it was really funny. I'm so sorry. I'm going to say it out loud. I thought it was really great to see Bella Hadid's dad put out a quote. This was allegedly from the internet. I didn't, I didn't verify it. Calling Israel Nazis. I love humans. They're so great. And don't get me wrong. I understand what point he was making, but my bro, like, I understand the point he was making. Very funny, though. I was like, hmm, that's an interesting perspective. Yeah. Okay. It was like when w one of my friends found out I was listening to Jordan Peterson for a moment, even though I don't even like Jordan. And she was like, are you a white nationalist now? And I was like, you think listening to a psychology professor's lectures makes me an Assyrian a white nationalist? And she was like, well, I don't know. And I was like, 
what are you what are you talking about like what are you talking about and again it's the bubbles right like even at the time i was like huh like it's so bubbly right i get it okay i absolutely understand like it feels good to say it out loud like i'm not the fascist you're the fascist what does it even mean right i love it nah you you suppress that shit you fight Ugh. that. I'm not. This video wasn't about trash and kidology explicitly. Like, this is not mm, kind mm. to kidology. It and to be fair, I talk mad shit on the internet. So to be fair to the FD signifier, I don't even blame him for going hard on kidology because I go very hard on everybody. And I just think we should keep doing that as long as we can talk to them about it. I'll talk to anybody about it who's here in good faith. You have to be here in good faith. Like, because I don't debate, right? So I'm in good faith being very critical. I feel like when it's not in good faith, it doesn't feel good. But FD did talk to Kidology. But see, he wasn't going to be swayed because he lives in the bubble and he can't be. Like, he's not allowed to change his mind. He would have to leave the bubble, which is, like, again, the point. When you're in a political bubble, the moment you sway, if, Kid if FD Signifier ever humanized Kidology to a point of understanding her perspective, he would have to change his own. And that is too goddamn scary for a guy who's built his, his platform – doing what he's doing and I don't blame him because the bubble he's in is a pretty good one. It's necessary for him and his family. He feels really attached to it. I don't need him to exit the bubble, but he won't be able to humanize Kidology then because you won't be able to seek Kidology unless you can do that, right? Literally. And that's the issue is that ultimately when you adhere to a bubble, which is fine, I'm not saying you're a bad person, but I'm saying you're picking a bubble that makes it hard to question yourself every time you meet someone new. That's why people who say, I have diverse friends. I have diverse friends to an extent, but all of us have enough connectivity and overlap that we get along, but they are still very different from me. But we're not, we're, I definitely have limits about who I can bring into my circle because I can only handle certain people, right? But I love progressives over conservatives. I have almost no really conservative close friends um, because that's a really hard bubble for me to vibe in except for my siblings and stuff. I generally don't like conservatives because I generally get lectured by them too much, more than progressives lecture me because I'm obviously more progressive. I want to hang out with people that lecture me the least. <laughs> ha! How about that? Like that's who I want to hang out with. So other than my siblings and my parents, like, I do not try to have conservative friends. I try very much to make it clear I do not fuck with conservatives. I do not want them as friends, generally speaking. But I'm happy to have them as casual, like, we get along friends. Like, I would, Brett Cooper and I could definitely chill. But I'm not going to confide in Brett Cooper. She's never going to see me. She's not, she's only going to understand me as the former conservative I probably was, maybe. So again, I don't blame FD Signifier for not humanizing Kidology. But it is one of those things where, I would be asking too much of a conservative to humanize me because they might have to change their views radically, right? And then I don't need to go back to conservatism. Like it doesn't vibe with my views, but it's not the same thing. Someone might say, well, Brittany, what if you humanize the conservative? You might have to change your views. I already said the conservatives could exist. I'm pro-free, like free religion. Be your religious self. I don't give a fuck. Like you can be whatever you want to be. You have the right to like have a religion and do your thing and be anti-gay. You just don't have the right to impose on people's civil rights. You have the right to think however you want to think. You do you. I would never fire you from a job for being conservative. I wouldn't care. Like, I wouldn't do that to you. But you guys would definitely do it to me. And that's the difference. It, she will not. And by the way, other leftists would fire the conservatives for being anti-gay, which is why I'm not politically a leftist. I'm philosophy-wise more leftist. This is important enjoy watching this video and i'm not going to try to like gaslight into thinking that this was a nice thing to do right or this is a kind thing to do i i've 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 seen these types of videos about me and mostly they're shitty but like i've seen my face on the screen but me not there it's not a fun experience and so mm -hmm. i want to mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. send a send a send a, a, a empathy towards Kidology if she if and when she sees this uh that it was not a malicious act to break down this video the way we did it was because this video presents some very significant and important issues that we on the left do need to engage with not because see I've started laughing I'm not gonna do that not because this was a 
um, challenging video argumentative wise, but because it illustrated the types of challenges that we need to get better at dealing with, with how far we we have to we have to we one of us 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 we have to 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 be you we you we you we you are from just regular people who are still very much under the hegemony under hegemonic thought and so of all the times I've did a reaction video, I was like, I gotta do this one and it's gotta be out there for people to see because we need to engage with why a person who considers himself a moderate would make a video like this mm. <laughs> that is inherently right wing. Actually, wait, in defense of FT Signifier, Kidology does say she's apolitical, but then makes a lot of content about leftist YouTube. Cause this video, isn't political but it's it is about politics it's not quite philosophy either but it is kind of interpersonal relationships in regards to political groups and socialization so does kidology well let's be objective because z's a friend so let's try to be objective here my bias aside though i love z is this video political or not what do we think is this a political video and does z have the right to say she's apolitical because I would say that I don't, I as an American voter pay attention to politics. I as a content creator don't really follow politics enough to call myself a political content creator. But I wouldn't say I don't talk about politics in an interpersonal philosophy way. Hmm. That's the question. Is she, because I wouldn't say I'm apolitical. Uh, that would be the wrong way to say it. Because I obviously vote and I obviously engage in politics. But as a content creator, I'm pretty apolitical political i think am i apolitical f f as a content creator oh how do we define this that's interesting because obviously i make my politics really clear like i'm very blunt about my politics so i'm not apolitical but is z apolitical like she's not american and then i don't think she talks about um politics from where she so i don't hmm yeah i i would say that i'm definitely not apolitical right guys because like i share my opinions like i tell you who i vote for if like people ask and stuff because I don't care. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. It depends on how you define politics. Is it like personal political or is it discussing the structure of government? Yeah, see, I definitely. OK, great point. I think it's this would be personal political, right? Can you s critique political views and stand as a political? Not if you make it personal and kid is making it personal by complaining or even stating that it bothered her that FD came for her the way she the way he did so she's making it personal because they're not talking about ideas she's asking them to do better as people so she's not making it about ideas she's making it about him she's saying you your character is not up to standard right Like, I go after people's character. Like, I say, like, you don't have a good character. I wouldn't trust you. Or, like, oh, your character is okay, but, like, I wouldn't trust you with this or this. Or, like, hey, it's not, like, people's politics. It's people's character. But some people think your politics are your character, which is more the leftist perspective. And, to be fair, the conservative one, a little bit. Hmm. I think the video is about hypocrisy in groups, tribes, more than it is about politics. That is fair. Is politics just the easiest one to go about? You break down politics without sharing your views. Mm. Does, does, even though it's about groupthink, why does she choose political ones? Is it because it's easy? Yeah, he called her a Nazi without no, her knowing her. She thinks he needs to do better and doesn't care. Well, I think that's true from person to person. I think this is why the world can't be better and introspective is because like we are willing to just call people Nazis right and that's crazy and at the same time 
It also is a part of that bubble speech pattern and pretty casual for them. So you kind of have to like radically accept them starting with yourself. So asking them to do better doesn't make sense because to them that is doing better. So instead you would say, oh, I really wish to see a world that looked more like this, which is what I would say. I would say, hey, it's better to identify a Nazi correctly than to misidentify someone as a Nazi incorrectly. And the same way it is better to... Um, identify anyone correctly in the right category rather than misidentify them. Like people always say to me, oh, Brittany, you have such beef with destiny. I have beef with everybody who has beef with me. I don't have any beef. I don't actually have beef with destiny. I have beef with him as a progressive commentator and content creator, not as a person, but of course who he is as a person reflects his content. It's like when I found out that BreadTube behind closed doors was doing stuff that they preached against on their political channels, like the same reason they were canceling other people, they were doing it behind closed doors. Like I'm not going to fuck with that, right? I don't like it. Like I think it's bullshit, but that's the thing is like for a lot of people that's called normal. But for me, I think that's bullshit. And so I don't like to fuck with it. And so people are like, oh, you just have beef with people. Yeah, I have beef with their character as a content creator pushing out a narrative and holding on to a title, right? Like I do with Lav saying like, oh, I might have borderline, but like she doesn't. And like, I don't even know if she's been diagnosed as autism. It's fine. It doesn't matter. We're all going to die in like 100 years. It's fine. But it is one of those things where, um, wait, politics, progressive, falling into a category, destiny. Fuck, I lost my train of thought. Uh, politics. Hmm. Damn it. I talked for too long. I lost my thought. Uh, PG says, I think it's probably more personal for her, at least when it comes to FD. Hold on. I think she is maybe trying to make the rest of it fit into a larger narrative. Well, it is personal in some ways. Politics. Is, oh, that's what it is. Politics is personal, right? So FD would say as a leftist, right? It is personal what you think about queer people. And if you think they're bad because you're religious, you're a bad person. And Kidology would say because FD is willing to call her a Nazi without knowing her, he could be a bad person or slash need to do better. And we're all saying, I want the world to change because I want to feel better about being in it. I want the world to change. I want you to do better so I can feel comfortable being in it. And that's what we're all saying, right? Destiny is upset that I called out a part of his character and compared him to Sneeko, which makes no sense to me since he brags happily on his channel that he does it. So I should be able to say, yeah, this thing he brags about, I'm heavily critiquing without him thinking, Brittany isn't seeing me clearly. Well, you stated it yourself and I said, yeah, the thing you seem to be very proud of, I think is very bad, but I don't care because it's through my values. So it's subjective. So you can keep doing you, right? But that's the problem. Why would he be mad at being compared to somebody who does the same action he does? The same action, right? Like, why is it insulting? It's insulting because the ego he's built around himself thinks he's better than this guy who's doing the same thing he's doing because over here he's doing a little bit better than Sneeko. So because Destiny is doing a little bit better than Sneeko in some areas, he doesn't feel it's good to compare them without listening to what I'm comparing, right? It's very specific. It's very specific. Destiny waits to get caught before saying something. Sneeko usually tells on himself. That's a very specific kinds of introspection. One waits to get caught. The other tells on himself. Very different. Very specific, right? Kidology is upset because FD is giving her a label she doesn't agree with. But Kidology didn't burn the bridge. She reached out a hand. She said, FD, talk to me. Kidology is being introspective, but also she is hurt and she's saying it. Kidology is using her introspection and her self-awareness to reach out to a person who called her this thing she obviously isn't. And so Kidology gets the brownie points for not shying away from the discussion, but saying, okay, let's have the conversation. And then FD signifier can't engage or humanize Kidology because then to his leftist posse, he would be failing them in his sense of character because he'd be humanizing Kidology and therefore JK Rowling. And that's the issue because Kidology wants to humanize Kid um, JK Rowling. As an example, I wouldn't. So Brittany doesn't care about JK Rowling now. She's too transphobic and too annoying. I don't care. So FD and I would probably get along. But Kidology, let's, this is a really weird example, but just follow me. Kidology says, oh, well, maybe JK Rowling isn't as bad as we think she is, which puts F uh, which puts FD signifier on a red flag, like, oh no, oh no, oh no, and puts me in a Kidology. Shh. No. 
Like I would tell kid, don't, don't. But like I understand because I also went through the journey of being very sympathetic to JK Rowling and waiting to see if she'd get, say with me, better. Better so I could live in a world with trans people. But JK Rowling won't do it. So JK Rowling is my FD signifier. FD signifier needs to do better. JK Rowling needs to do better. I need to do better. Kid needs to do better. Steven needs to do better. We all need to do better. But again, the reasoning is, that's why categorization is so important. Obviously, Sneeko and Destiny aren't the same, except in one area. And then they are very similar. And that's the area I criticized, right? And I will continue to criticize as a content creator because like, how could I not? It's so easy. It's just like the easiest like example to use, right? And that's why progressives won't talk to him because he's breaking cardinal rules of basic feminist or progressive philosophy or political ideology, right? And then because he associated with Nick Fuentes or associated with these people, it's like, again, all of these things set us into different bubbles. My liberal friends that vote Democrat that are just like Democrats, they don't understand pronouns. They barely understand trans people. They're here for it. They're open to like voting and everything, but they don't get it. They don't spiritually even understand it, right? Progressives try to spiritually understand trans plight. Um, JK Rowling can only see it through the lens of being a woman, which is very difficult. And then Destiny sees it through the lens of politics and Sneeko sees it through the lens of the grift. It's like everyone chooses the lens to view something. And I'm saying, what if you chose the lens of zooming all the way out and recognizing that we're all human beings with a bias and a prejudice that move us in directions? What if we did that? But the dilemma with that is it means you might have to dismantle the bubble that you've been so protected by for so long, including FD Signifier, who's been so protected by this bubble of audience that does love him and wants him to act a certain way. And if he acts out of turn, they don't like him, right? And that's a part of it. So again, everyone is having sort of a relationship with how they're seeing the same situation. It's like watching a video with 14 different perspectives, okay? And like, you just got to zoom out until you humanize, zoom out until you humanize, zoom out until you humanize, zoom out until you humanize. And that's really exhausting to do. And you don't make the same amount of content or the same amount of spicy content. I would love to talk to FD Signifier and I don't want to have to make a hate video to do it. Now, I made a pretty critical video of him, but I also criti criticized Z in that video. Z talks to me, FD doesn't. That's fine. You're not obligated to talk to Brittany, but take note, right? of why not. And the why is the key. Seeking says the consequence of isolation breeds resentment, hence the polarity gets worse. More people get demonized and less people get humanized and less people are introspective. It's a cycle, bro. Love is a good zoom out. Me too, bro. Love a good zoom out, you know? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. You know, and then not realize how right leaning it is. Exactly. Um, and, and so many of And it is. It is right leaning. Why is Kidology shaking her head right here? Like, it is right leaning. Kidology has tenets of right leaning, lang white, right leaning language in the sense that I'm more right leaning than FD and she's more right leaning than me. And and destiny's more right leaning than her and like that's what i'm trying to say is like to progressives who are very left everyone's going to be right leaning so and that is accurate i'm not offended at that that is accurate britney is more left than kidology and more right than fd signifier that is an accurate assumption of my work but ultimately politically i vote progressive but technically i have the nuance to be a little bit more somewhere in the middle but obviously I'm not perfect, I have my biases. This politics. Interestingly, FD never uploads full streamed patron videos and live streams onto his second YouTube channel. But for some reason, he decided to do so just this one time. What is a further- That means he, he likes you enough. You are enough of a threat that he did that. Good job, girl, that's a compliment. Interest to me is that now for research, when I look for this video, it has vanished. My channel oh. was reported. I lost subscribers. I lost the majority of my income. And this was all- See, this part is hard for me to understand. So this is the part where I would need to see receipts because as a YouTuber myself, you, I don't think FD has a connection to YouTube. 
And I don't know who reported her content, but it probably wasn't FD Signifier, right? It was probably someone in his audience. And that is what happens when you go against a guy who has a bigger audience is you run the risk of people false flagging your channel, which is against TOS, by the way. Like you can get in trouble, but that's like trolls are going to troll are going to troll. Do you remember the scandal with Matt Mundane who false flagged like 10 channels and his stream was like, prove it to us, prove it to us. You don't do it. He basically never came back to YouTube after that. He was a uh, he was considered like even with the conservatives, like the worst person because he was false flagging channels because they pissed him off. So this part of Z's contention with FD is hard for me to process because AdSense goes up and down for most YouTubers all of the time. Even David Dobrik got like no AdSense because he wasn't monetizable. So I don't know if Z is just not playing the capitalism game right or if she's serious, but like I would love to see receipts on this because it you you have to be careful when you engage with bigger audiences, but something about about this seems weird to me. All a result of the things that FD said in his response to my video and directly to me. The views on my original video suddenly stopped entirely and all the views went to his out of context reaction to particular- See, how does that work? How does that work on YouTube? Like, right? Like, listen to what she's saying. Look, and Z's a friend of mine, F so I'm just being critical, but none of this quite makes sense, right? time. What is of further interest to me is that now for research when I look for this video it has vanished. My channel was reported, I lost subscribers, I lost the majority of my income and this was all a result of the things that FD said in his response to- How would that work? Right? Because technically when people usually make content about you, you usually go up in views, that's why drama fun like fuels the views. You usually get paid more. So what is she insinuating here? Is she insinuating that FD is so powerful on YouTube that he got in trouble? Like why? That's the problem is like this doesn't quite make sense, right? Through my video and directly to me. The views on my original video suddenly stopped entirely. And how is that FD's fault though? Right? Like, again. All the views went to his out of context. All the views went to his video. Did they? Did they? Text reaction to particular statements I'd made. And so it was- Because his audience isn't going to care about kids' video. They're not going to go watch it. It doesn't matter, right? So they're only going to watch his video and he gets more views slash is a bigger YouTuber. So do we know this for a fact or does it feel like this must be what happened? During this time and as a consequence of the ramifications to what had happened, that my thinking on Cat Black's video I began to evolve. I began to move from thinking, why is left tube so white? To why is cornbread tube so white? Now this may seem to be a complete juxtaposition, but do bear with me and let me explain in FD's own words. The online left is overwhelmingly white, a petite bourgeois white community in fact there is a black petty bourgeois community on youtube this petty bourgeois is comprised Kay says she's not thinking through what she said she's saying she's speaking from an emotional driver's seat that intellectualing her emotions um the seat then intellectualizing her intellectualizing her emotional expression yeah like i love kidology i love z but i just like youtuber to youtuber this doesn't make any sense with how the website works it could make sense if i'm missing something but it doesn't make sense because again if his video brought it should either bring you more views but it wouldn't FD's not that, it's, does FD even have a million subscribers? That means he doesn't even have a, a contact at YouTube. FD Signifier. S Signifier has 600,000 subscribers. I'm pretty sure that means he doesn't even have like somebody at YouTube who has his back, right? I think you have to have a million subscribers to get a representative, I think. I think to get a contact at YouTube, I could be wrong. So again, I'm not sure why she's making this claim. It feels really strange. Like, again, if it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. Maybe I'm missing something.
consist of members such as FT Signifier, Foreign Man in a Foreign Land, and other largely black content creators, but not exclusively so. These are people who they personally condone and collaborate with. They determine who is truly black and who isn't. Yes. But black in their way, not in Kidology's. Kidology has to get over the fact that she's not black like other people are black. She's not American. She's not black in that way. She was adopted by white people. Like she isn't black like other people are black because no one is black like other people are black. No one's white like other people are white. Nobody's Middle Eastern like other people are Middle Eastern. <laughs> Everyone is different. Every bubble changes your relationship with it because I watch black content creators who are very black like into black American politics and they won't even talk to people who aren't black and I think their content's great but I'm watching it to learn about this bubble to learn about these people right they try they they're very much like here for black people make content for black people are not interested in other people and even though it could help other people and they're open to that they're always focused on black people and I think that's great because it's their bubble their reality their fight and I'm here for it. But if I'm not invited to the cookout, kids not invited to the cookout, and I think that needs to be said, like, that's okay. I would rather live in a world that's diverse and we're all figuring out our own micro bubbles than assume we're all having the same lived experience. Right? We are not all having the same lived experience. Now, there is a little bit of snobbery in these bubbles, of course, right? Of course, there's snobbery happening because, of course, in order for a bubble to feel superior enough to see you as the enemy, they have to see themselves as the hero, right? They have to see themselves as the better. Kidology made a video saying do better. She does see herself as better, right? And FD says, well, if you see me as better, I see me as better. And then it's a game of who sees who as better. I see me as better. You see me as better. You see me. Everyone's better. Everyone's their own better. Everyone's idea of better also looks different. So when FD says, hey, be better, he's not saying what Kidology is saying. When Kidology says, be better. And that's the point of my work is to point out the bubble's expectation of behavior is specific to the bubble. I remember in Seattle, I got invited to go to uh, a black dance club and it was by a black woman, of course, blacks only or people of color. And some of the people in our friend group were a little upset that I was invited, but they couldn't come. And they're like, why do you get to go? And I was like, well, because I'm a Syrian. And they were like, yeah, but you're white. And I was like, but I'm a Syrian. So I get invited. And they're like, but why do you get invited? Like you're white. And it's true. I'm not brown and I'm not black, but I'm a Syrian. So there's a loophole. And I don't identify, say I'm always in the middle as Kidology is, right? We're not white enough and we're not black enough. But let me make it clear that I am never going to be white enough and I'm never going to be black enough. But I am always Assyrian enough because it is what I am and you can't take it away from me. Being Assyrian, being Chaldean, coming from the place my family comes from, being a recent immigrant, I have a connection to a place and a culture and a bubble that is so specific and isn't a general black bubble, which could mean anything depending on where you are. You, you can't mistake where my people are from. Like we're in the Bible. Like Abraham was Chaldean. Like we have lineage, girl. So like we have a whole ass history, right? So again, for me, it's like very easy to be like, I know where I belong. But even though in the American bubble, I don't belong anywhere. I'm not white enough or black enough, though I do get invited to much more black events than I do white events, which I'm grateful for. I'm not sure what a white event would look like, but I have a feeling I wouldn't want to go. <laughs> which in their eyes gives them the authority to use the exact same kind of derogatory racist language that creates the very divisions they claim to want to overcome in the first place. Do, do. Do, 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 Let me tell you what I find frustrating about coons and their belief that they have that question to make. This is the right. problem with, with coon, like coonery and internalized anti-blackness and wanting to be in proximity of whiteness, right? And just wanting white approval and hating oneself and it makes you blame your community for stuff that logically you know don't make sense. Don't make because no fucking clap, sense. That's not the latter in their mind. That Because there's a difference in deeply in the spirit of what is a token and what is a coon. Because I'm sure many of we learned Negroes have been the token in a room to black people, to in, in a room oh, full of white sure. spaces. I'm sure we all have. Do not no, get me started. <laughs> It nigga, was nigga, a gatekeeper. 
Yo, it was a gatekeeping black lady. Believe it or not, hey, the coon is always is. Is. Hey, hey. I'm essentially. So I'm not, okay, like when I hear her use the word like coon, right? Like that's what the word is getting blinked out, right? Like I don't, I'm not white, so I don't identify thinking about that word in any way. I have no feeling towards it. I'm so like, I don't care. Like I listen to black people who say that word and I don't even notice it. And I don't notice because they're, they're not talking about me. So I don't think about it that much. But I know what they're saying as well. They're saying I'm here for me, which everyone is saying. So again, it's interesting. Stop gay judging white people or people. Wait, stop gay judging white people who aren't white like you, Brittany. I'm just saying it's different. I don't identify. So like I'm not identifying with this talk right now. It's not bothering me. But Kidology is using it as a point. But I don't think that's the point. My work would say. You can't hold this against them. You would instead say, why are they talking like this? And who doesn't talk like this? Because no matter where I go, everyone has their bias. Like I, when I talk about sex workers, I don't like people who say like whore about sex workers. But some sex workers call themselves whores. But I don't like it because I don't trust people who aren't sex workers to call sex workers whores and don't mean it in a negative way. I don't trust it. Right. But I would trust a sex worker to call themselves a whore. And at the same time, I feel like racism is something or prejudice is something or groupism is something that people do so naturally that I don't know anyone who doesn't have a group they talk about in a particular way. So, again, if I'm being really honest, I would feel comfortable being in a room with somebody like this because one, they're not talking about me. And two, it feels like an opportunity to learn something. And then if they were talking about somebody like me in some way, I mean, I deal with that with my own goddamn family. I have to literally sit at a table with my beautiful family that I love and listen to them talk about how trans and gay people are groomers and like predatorizing children as their three gay kids sit at the table with them. So I, okay, like I don't need the world to talk shit on me. I have my own family for that. I love you and I love my family and I can radically accept my family for who they are. But that's just how it goes. You know what I'm saying? So I think I'm just more comfortable sitting in a room with people that talk shit. You're invited to my white family Christmas. You'll have to eat Ludafisk though. Oh, girl, you know I'm about to Google that. What's that? Ludafisk. What is this? What is it? What is this? It looks like fish. White fish. Potatoes. What is it? Interesting, interesting. Okay. I would eat it. I would eat anything. Um, at least once. Let me see. I don't identify with a lot of shit people talk about regardless of what they look like. I mean, I'm just saying. Some people think of it as a slur though. Which one? The C word? I would eat fermented fish. That sounds good. Okay, let's keep going. Saying that just as white women will will find ways to placate whiteness just for their proximity to it, will throw whatever womanhood, their, their femininity is second to their whiteness. Mm. In many ways, yeah. you have a lot of black people in the States, you will not find this of any surprise, where their blackness is secondary to their Americanness, and, and you know what I find frustrating about that? Clarence is one of them. Yeah, but I just going to say, I just going to say, and that's coons. No, no but, but the thing about a coon. Is okay, that's her bubble language, and that's the word she's using. I feel like I get this woman. I feel like I know this bubble, so I'm like, yeah, yeah, she means it. I know what she means, but she's not technically wrong. But she's also using a word that means a certain thing. I feel like if I was hanging out with her, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I get you, based. And then I'd be like, so in your bubble, this makes sense, right? But what if we zoomed out and we recognized that we're all the same? <laughs> but, like, I understand what she's talking about. I feel like she's making sense. Like, where the resentment is, every black person... While still being, you know... Eric Bell talks about this and faces mm -hmm. at the bottom of the well. As, as well as still creating division. You know what I'm saying? She can be right and creating division. Everyone is right and everyone is wrong. Because everyone can be right by the way they switch the narrative. Do you get what I'm saying? Like trying to moralize her language is like so denying how we all talk about bullshit in our own bubbles. 
don't tell me right now you have not been to a family function or a friend function and somebody hasn't said some shit about some group and used some derogatory term and you're sitting there like, we know who you hate for no fucking reason. Or, oh yeah, like I know why you hate them because they like ostracized your family and like murdered you en masse. Cool. Like, we are right now literally justifying hating each other because one group did one group to one group did one group. Okay? And I get it. That's just very human. She's not being any more human than the rest of us. Right? Just because you're uncomfortable being around her. Right? And I get it. Now, I would tell her to be more introspective and more thoughtful. She would see herself as like on the macro and realize like this is talk that works in a bubble. But outside of a bubble, it's just like a a construct, right? She's using a word that was given through the construct to describe a phenomenon with white people or types of black people that are softer or more white than black. When he talks about rules of racial standing, every single black person is presented with the opportunity to coon or legitimize anti, anti-blackness anti by repeating. This is a, this makes sense to me. I'm sorry, I follow way too many black political streamers, but or like um, YouTubers. But this, and I've read too many books, but like, yes, like, this makes sense. I know what she's saying. She's, this is her language, but I, translating it, there are plenty of opportunities in which black people sell out blackness in order to appeal to whiteness. That's all she's saying. White talking points, we all have it. What the Coons problem is, is not that they want to pull up the ladder because they don't perceive us as being on the same ladder. Their problem Wait, is that you're not true. playing the ball. No, I don't believe it. True. By the way, black people who play into white people politics view other black people as less than them because they won't get their shit together to play the game. And depending on the game you're playing, that is absolutely an issue, which is why they on the other side. So let's say this lady, I don't know who she is, ends up taking the other thing where it's like, you think you're better than me because you're playing to the, the white people. You're anti-black. And to be honest, all of it is true. In some ways, you need to play the game better. And in some ways, it would mean selling out blackness. And then in some ways, if you don't sell out blackness, you're kind of not playing the game well because whiteness is majority. And then in some ways, like it is black people selling out their blackness for whiteness because they want the investment of what white people will give them. Like it's not even like this is bubbles. This is the construct. Like this is the game you're playing. And I say, leave all of those bubbles and move somewhere else. Like, leave all of those bubbles and do a different one. This is not great for your skin or your hair. Leave these bubbles and go play a different game. And some people will say, I can't play a different game because of X, Y, Z. And that is also the bubble, right? She's making total sense to me, whether or not you agree with it, right? It truly yeah. see I believe that the oh, functionality definitely. of it mm -hmm. is absolutely the awareness that you have to shut that fucking door behind you for anybody else as a coon, as a token. That is the white supremacist sure. functionality of tokenism, of cooning. It depends on what position the coon token mm. is in. Hold on. H says, okay, but if Nick Fuentes used the K slur or JK used the transgender slur, uh, people would have a problem. I mean, people have a problem with this. Don't get me wrong. People have a problem with her language. Even people in this group are having a problem with some of her language. So it, everyone has a problem with someone's language, right? But I would say it's less the language and why the language is being used. It's less the language and why is the language being used? What is it trying to convey? Is it trying to convey their own hurt, their own feeling of betrayal? Is it try what is it what is it trying to convey? Right? And that's the nuanced perspective. The bubble perspective is like, well, if they can say it, I can say it. The nuanced perspective is in all of our bubbles, we know we say things. Why is it okay for sometimes to use it and sometimes not? Why is it sometimes a red flag and sometimes not? Because you don't know why someone's saying it. But if you know why they're saying it, and in her context, it makes sense to my brain, she's saying it to explain a phenomenon, a social phenomenon that is real. And she's using language that might be offensive to some people, but it's not offensive to me. And that's a choice. You also can make the choice to be offended at the N-word or the K-word or the F-word. That's up to you. It's a construct. It's a made-up language. But you have to decide why you're offended. Now, I am sometimes offended by slurs and not always. I'm sometimes also offended by the word bitch, which is sometimes a slur and sometimes not a slur. You know, if I think someone means something, I could be offended at the word ugly. Being offended is not only for slurs. You can be offended at the way someone looks at you. So again, 
The context is what matters. Why are we offended? And that's a moment of introspection for you. Why are you offended? Why are you feeling left out? Why are you feeling like these people are in your bubble? Because Kidology has to understand these black people are not in her bubble. She's not in their bubble. I feel, I think ironically enough, oh God, I hate to say this out loud. I think I'd feel more at home in this bubble than Kidology would. And it's because I am obsessed with race bubbles. And I'm also obsessed with black like uh, political movements because I think they're so interesting in terms of um, such a specific culture that is so diverse and within itself so misunderstood. Like it is so, they like if you read like black philosophers, we've talked about this or black political um, books. If you read conservative black people versus like more progressive people, they have some of the most diverse and sometimes nuanced perspectives on blackness that is I can't explain to you the diversity of it because there's not blackness is so not a monolith so white politics a little bit more monolithic but still not but black politics is very complicated it is so much more interesting and complicated it's like a web of so much interesting history it's global it's fascinating like it is the most fat look at this diverse panel of black people all from different places. White politics is different. It's not totally different, but it's different, right? So again, I I, I love everyone's perspective. I want Kidology to feel safe and like she belongs somewhere, but I also want these people to feel like they're safe and they belong somewhere. And then I want us all to accept that we all feel safe somewhere that to someone else is their worst nightmare. My mom... And dad, again, had 10 kids and raised them in this perfect Catholic bubble they made for them. And half their kids went, kill me now or take me out of this bubble. And my poor parents went, oh my gosh, why don't you love this thing I made for myself? Right? Why don't you love this place that I think is beautiful? How could you reject this thing that I made for myself? And I'm like, because you made it for me and you didn't make it for me. You made it for you and you didn't make it for me. I need to go make my own bubble. And then somebody might come into my bubble and say, ew, I do not like the way Brittany lives. Like, I don't feel safe here. Cool. Go be safe somewhere else. We need to be where we need to be. We don't need to be everywhere. The world, even if it was peaceful and it was all fives and everybody was enlightened, we would all still gravitate towards people who are similar to us. We are not all the same, but we are all the same. This is very important. On the macro, we are all the same, which means we do not need to be violent or hate each other. On the micro, we are not the same. Even good people don't get along. And it could be for something as simple as, mm, I listen to classical, you listen to rap, and like, I don't know how that's going to vibe out, right? And that's the nuance. Again, my, my way of perceiving the world is like, how do I perceive this on the macro? Radical acceptance. And how do I perceive this on the micro? Within reason of understanding that people didn't just get here. They got here because they didn't feel safe. And this is where they ended up. And the same way Kidology doesn't feel safe, so this is where we ended up. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go with the coon over token because I think I agree with the fact that we've all, yes, say coon. Not only is coon a racist slur, it is also described by the Jim Crow Museum of Racist Memorabilia as follows. The coon caricature is one of the most insulting of all anti-black caricatures. The name itself, an abbreviation of raccoon, is dehumanizing. As with Sambo, the coon was portrayed as a lazy, easily frightened, chronically idle, inarticulate buffoon. And many of these online leftists encounter leftist ideology mm -hmm. first online through one of many video essayists or commentators or in college or both. Places and institutions that tend to exclude the most prominent black leftist thinkers from the space and thus set the tone for what voices are welcome. And I always get sad when people want to push down one piece of a minority to bring others up. I feel for Kidology and how she isolated she feels. Absolutely. And then do we also feel for this one woman who's felt isolated her life and never good enough? And so she doesn't want to play, quote, Coon Olympics in order to be accepted. Do you get what I mean? This is a different use of the slur. I agree. So I would argue that that's the problem is Kidology is now justifying her dislike of the woman using the slur as if it relates to how other people use the slur. But the black lady is using it for a very specific reason, right? And that's the point. 
So I can see why all of these people feel this way and got to where they are. And then the question is, what next? Right? I don't think they're using it in the classic definition in the conversation either. No, they're literally using it as black people who push, who sell out blackness for the approval or the, um, six, uh, or reaching success in whiteness. Literally the way the lady is using it is black people who sell out blackness in order to appeal to whiteness to get an advantage, right? They are less black to appeal to whites. That's how the, the bubble is using it. And which ones are not? As my unfortunate dealings with FD signifier demonstrate, cornbread tube sets the tone for what voices are welcome and what voices are not. Yes, and because it's a specific bubble. It's not a bubble of blackness. It is a specific bubble of blackness. It is not a bubble of blackness. It is a specific bubble of blackness. Eight or how many black people are in the whole world? They're not all invited is what I'm trying to say. Okay. A small minority is invited. Okay. This is very important to remember. She's falling into the mistake. She is not. This is not her group. This is not her bubble. Stop trying to be a part of a bubble that wasn't meant for you. This is why you're lonely. Not Kidology, all of you. You are lonely because you keep trying to be friends in a bubble you were never meant to visit for more than a moment, right? Visit it and leave. Visit and leave, okay? But there's a lack of empathy to be willing to use it. They're definitely completely dehumanized her. Um. Yes, but I think that in order for her to be humanized, that means they would have to pop their bubble. That's what I'm saying. You, She also can't humanize them enough to radically accept them for who they are. She wants them to change because she wants to feel safe and they want her to change so they feel safe. Ultimately, this is why I hate making prescriptions. When we make a prescription and we say do better, which is fine. I say that sometimes too. I don't really mean it though, you know. When I say it, I mean it differently. Kidology is making content saying they need to be better. But again, you know what I mean? There's something to that. Why I'm, I'm saying, but why are we acting like this conversation was reasonable to talk about kidology? Wait, it was reasonable to talk about kidology. They were being rude as fuck. I, yeah, I don't get that. Like, I don't get my feelings hurt like that. That's the thing. It's like, I'm not even mad. That's what I'm saying. Like, people who think I'm literally mad at Destiny or anything like this, I'm like, this is the game they're playing. And I'm much more, like, radically accepting of it, to be fair now. But, like, this is, like, this is what I'm saying. You have to practice radical acceptance. They are going to be rude. They are going to misinformation. They are going to absolutely reject you. They're absolutely not going to see you. And then you have to remember, like, it was never for you anyways. You know what your bubble is. And wanting them to change so you fit in, like catnip, wanting, saying, I don't want people to change, but I'm going to ask them so people feel more safe in the space is to say, I want the space to change to fit these people. And that's why I say, like, everything should be bubbles and we should stay in our lanes. You know what I mean? Yeah, I say it, but I don't mean it the way they're saying it. I don't care if FD signifier changes. I don't care if destiny changes. I don't care if any of these people change. I'm saying over here, I'm going to exhibit the change in the comp, like the content I would like. I'm saying I have to put the boundary on myself. You can talk how you're going to talk, but I can't fuck with it. And you can't be mad at me for not fucking with it because there's not a space for me here. And then people will say, well, there is a space for here. You're just a pussy and you don't know how to be here. Well, yeah, but you're a pussy too because I call you out and you cry like a baby and burn a bridge. Everyone's a pussy. Everyone is a pussy. Everybody wants to feel safe in their space. And I'm saying, I just want to say it out loud. I want to feel safe in my space. So I'm going to focus on my channel here and comment about people. And if they want to come talk to me, I'm down. Right? The people in the video weren't even talking about Kidology. That is true too. This group of people right here aren't talking about Kidology. It was the video prior where they were. So again, I want to preach radical acceptance to say, I want to feel safe in my space. So I'm going to do it here. And I think they have the right to feel safe in their space. Right? Because I understand their perspective. It's like it's like the Catholics. They want to feel safe in their space and they don't want to go to the bathroom with a trans person. Fine. But make it clear and then we can all mind our own business. But we don't. We want people to be like us. So Catholic people can't mind their own business because they're like, hey, you need to change so I feel comfortable. Even if we're on different sides of the planet, I need to know that your ideology is never going to touch mine. So I need you to make sure you're like me. And then the other people are doing the same. And I'm saying this is the mistake. But you can do it. I don't care because the world's going to do it anyways. And then we're all going to die. 
Yay! And in setting that tone, FD and friends don't check their own cliquey and black purist tendencies. And they definitely demonstrate- Oh, gothics! Also rose to success by being sort of a black that doesn't fit into black bubbles. A black woman who doesn't fit into black bubbles. And kind of a punk too, as well. See, she had a shtick. That's the problem too. Talk about authenticity. Come on, don't fuck with me. Because I've tried this shtick myself. It doesn't work because I still don't fall into any camp. I tried to watch gothics. I really did. But she falls too hard into the camp of appealing to Republicans. She just does. Or she used to years ago. I don't know if she's changed. But that's like when you fall into a shtick, like my my thoughts might offend you, fell perfectly into her own shtick. And I subscribe to her and I watch her sometimes. But I can't do that. Like I literally just like as a content creator, I'm like so different in this way, which is fair. Like I get it. I'm the loner. I'm the loser. But like everyone else still fits into the bubble very well. And that's also the thing. Don't act like, oh, gothics and all these other people who are trying to be like, oh, I don't understand. They're also fitting into their own bubbles around them. And they are not fighting the same black fight that these other black people are fighting. It's a different black bubble. You're not a monolith. Black people are not all the same. You're not all fighting the same battle. Did you see the Keith Lee drama this week? That's a very specific bubble. She's a Christian now? Gothics is a Christian? Okay, she's a black Christian who hates the left. Cool. That is literally, we know the bubble. We know the bubble. We know the bubble. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not judging it. Like, if that's true, great. Love that for you, girl. Live and let live. I mean, live your life. But I'm saying don't pretend like we're not all fitting into bubbles. Kidology herself fits into a very specific kind of black person. And there are tons of black people like that. And Kidology still is trying to get FD Signifier and them people to like acknowledge her, let her onto the playground with her. And I'm like, stop it. We don't need them. But also I wouldn't mind hanging out with them because I get along with everybody. I want to be a bubble hopper. I just want to hang out with you and eat barbecue and leave. Like, can I do that, please? I don't need you to do better. Everyone's doing good enough. Or do better, but like do better for you, not for the bubble. Don't do better so I feel more at ease. Do better because you actually want to change. You actually think you need to do better. Otherwise, I don't need your performative bullshit. Their lack of knowledge of what blackness means to a diverse spectrum. Don't use Candace Owens as your example. She's a horrible grifter. She's a bad person. Everybody's not bad. Everyone nuanced. Candace Owens is within the bubble, a good person because she's doing what she needs to do to fit a narrative that helps conservatives feel seen at home. But Kidology needs to stop using people like Candace Owens. That's why the left doesn't trust you. Honestly, if I was FD Signifier, I also wouldn't trust Kidology. She just showed, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't, girl, we're not the same. It's not the same. They're not the same bubbles. They're all so different. And black people who are in black politics, of course, they're going to see Candace Owens as a traitor. I see her as a traitor to women. You think blacks aren't going to see her as a traitor? Come on. People, Come on. All cultures, experiences, and political interpretations, not just in the United States, but across the now, world. Now, I could be wrong, and maybe I'm misunderstanding Kidology's point, and then Z can confirm with me or tell me if I got it wrong. World Wide Web on which they work. They never check their own racist tendencies and definitely lack knowledge of these black socialist movements, which these folks hold the power in the space. FD and friends hold the power in the space in influencing the growth or otherwise of their friends. Take for instance, Soul Bunny, an artist and video essayist whose video essays are not only openly anti-white and racist, but are just not good. Good. The only people that need to be doing bake sales and going door to door are other white people. I can keep this going all day, but let's get into this caucasity. All of these white people. <laughs> it's a great caucasity. <laughs> and you know, even some Asian people were basically accusing me of attacking this, this innocent white woman who was just appreciating the culture. White leftists are not our allies. They yeah, this is a bubble. And in this bubble, this is how it works. They're not our accomplices. They are, they are not for liberation. They are for their own profit. And that seems to be true for my lived experience as well. Um, for, you know, building their own social capital. I have literally also, I have to agree with this. Like 
most of the social leftists I know who are on social media and they're killing the game are there to make money. And they're doing a great job at it. Good job, guys. Wow. And positioning them. And by the way, black people are not exempt from this. Black people also move this up the social ladder to make money at the expense of black people. Hence what the woman was saying earlier. Selves as the experts, as the, you know, they're, you know, like the whole, this whole thing has just made me realize that like white people are not serious it's because we have to keep explaining to white people that yes, white supremacy is actually at the root of everything. It's at the root of misogyny. It's at the root of queer phobia. It's at the root of transphobia. It's at the root of ableism. Sometimes it feels like white people are just like, okay, well, to be fair, Kidology put a little thing on the screen. It says prejudice uh, because prejudice, violence, and what we now term misogyny and homophobia never existed before Columbus. Well, it always existed, but what they mean in that bubble is from their framework, the root of it is white supremacy and white people problems. And I think that's probably accurate in America, that that would be probably the root of the issues, but it's not the root of the world and America isn't the world. So when they say, and then, but colonization did spread around the globe. Ugh. So it just depends on how you're viewing it, right? It's not like white people today or white people then or white people. It's more like the root of how the world evolved over time and how things ended up going and the violence of the world created, whether we like it or not, these bubbles of supremacy. And it neglected and left people at the wayside who never had a chance to compete. Whether you like it or not, that's just true. And so again, like, I think one of my favorite uh, TikToks is um, it shows like a screaming white man running towards a bubble or like towards a end goal. And it says guys who make 30K uh, fight screaming and fighting and kicking their way to defend their billionaires. They'll never be right. And so I think that's really important. Brittany, aren't you going into Kidology's bubble right now telling her to be different? Like, are you trying to change Kidology's bubble by telling them they should not change bubbles? No, I'm telling you guys what I think I would do if I was Kidology, but not if Kidology wasn't Kidology. I'm, you're watching my content. So you're getting my perspective of how I would have handled or would have thought about it. Not that I'm telling Kidology herself to change, but I am here to explain to you how I would view it. And I'm not telling Kidology to change. I'm saying Kidology is falling into the trap that she's trying to correct those people on, she's also falling into the trap. Because the moment you start to correct other people, outside of admitting it's your values and for your comfort, you, you're implying an objectivity that doesn't make sense. Like this girl is saying right now, it's true in some ways that white supremacy is the base of it, but it's also untrue in some ways that mis like white supremacy is the base of it. It's only true within the bubbles mechanism, but it's not true outside of it. And that's what I'm saying. Everything isn't true outside of Britney's values, but it's true within Britney's values. Again, I don't, why do you think this concept is hard for people to understand? When you're telling somebody my opinion without saying you should do it, but also saying, I think this would probably be better if you do do it, because by my theory, loving people for people is probably more reasonable, but you can't do that because the moment we disagree on what anime we like, we're not going to hang out anymore. I'm saying all things are true at once. That the reality is like, even if you followed me to the T, which humanity wouldn't, it would still be chaos. I'm saying there is no answer to any of this. There is no real answer. The answer is this is just how we spend our time. This is literally how you're spending your one life on earth. This is what you've decided to do with your time. This right here, this is it. You have one life on earth and you and I and everyone who's in this bubble have decided this is how we're going to spend our one time on earth. I am very amused by it and I'm very happy. This is what I've wanted to do my whole life. Talk about ideas, but none of it matters, right? It's all just for fun. It's stimulating. You know what I mean? Stimulating. Sounds like descriptive versus prescriptive uh, statements. People do blur those. They blur them all the time. Okay, that makes sense. So you don't want Kidology to change the way she approached this. I don't want Kidology to change her consciousness for my benefit. I want her 
to understand herself well enough to make the proper requests of people within a bubble of her own understanding, if that's what she wants. Because Kidology is sharing this with us, the audience, so she is saying she wants to have a conversation around it. I'm adding to the conversation what I would do. I don't care if she does it because she's a grown woman and I trust her to make decisions. The universe doesn't care. Exactly. I think she's just shedding light uh, instead of being straight up prescriptive. However, she did use some sus music over parts to sway emotions. True. Kidology is good at that. Yeah. Okay, let's go the root of transphobia it's at the root of ableism sometimes it feels like white people are just like being dense on purpose it's like their god-given right to be dense and to keep us trapped in this cycle of explaining to white people that white supremacy is at the root of everything this is just like a facade to them this is just a game okay i think that's probably true for some of the white people she's talking to i would say the root of all of this is the macro that none of us chose to be here. No one chose what we look like. Everything is a construct. So I would say both are wrong. That the only thing that is actually the root of uh, everything is humans. It's not white people. It's humans. And it's the fact that we exist. All of this could go away. Ableism and racism and transphobia it could all go away if humans didn't exist. But as long as humans exist, this will exist. Now, how it plays out it played out in our universe. Let's use that language. In this anime of life, it played out where white people dominated. Okay? It just played out that way. That's how it played out. So the consequence of that was straight white people got the dominant hierarchy of understand, like of um, calling or saying, it's always been this way. Why do you think you hear people say, it's always been this way? Both minority blacks and majority whites agree, it's always been this way. By their logic, even though we don't even know what happened with the lost history of the world, right? So we're also guessing. It's been this way forever as long as we think it has, blah, 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 right? But I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what has always also been this way? Life. And we continue the cycle, which is fine because it was going to happen anyways. I'm telling you, the individual, to get over the fact that this is your problem because the problem exists and you make it bigger. You can't dismantle racism until you dismantle humanity as a living species. All humans are racist. It didn't matter which team was going to win. They were going to be racist because people at their core think they're better than other people. Kidology titles her videos do better. I tell people to do better. Everyone thinks they're better, 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 better. Everyone thinks they're better. The root of this is humanity. Literally, if you don't want war, no more humans. Stop having babies. If you genuinely want to end racism, no more babies. Okay? If you want suffering to end, no more babies. That's it. End of story. They have no, like, actual stakes in the game. Thankfully, however, Soul Bunny's reputation precedes the quality of her essays. The nonsensical, racially bigoted arguments that she perpetually makes in order to justify her own shortcomings as a video essayist are fortunately offset by her friendships with FD and other bread tubers, such as Jesse Gender and Zoe B. And the thing is... Oh are fortunately offset by her friendships with FD and other bread tubers, such as Jesse Gender. Jesse Gender blocked me on Twitter, even though I've never spoken to her or added her. Okay, it probably wasn't personal. You know how many people have blocked me? And I, I think they just have me on an ad blocker list, but also who cares? I block people all the time and it's not personal. I just don't want to talk to you. Like, it's not personal. I just literally don't want to talk to you. And I think that's fine. Like, I want to make it clear here, it's very good to block people and you should do it. I think it's 100% fine to never talk to people. I think if you're content creators, we should always be able to talk about whatever's public, of course. But I don't think, like, blocking people is bad. Like, block everybody. So, again, I don't get my feelings over being blocked. I'm like, cool, you don't want to talk. It's a consent thing. If they block you, it's about consent. Right? So Kidology shouldn't be, I, again, you can do whatever you want. I would recommend reframing that perspective as in, Jesse blocked me on Twitter, even though I've never spoken to her, to, oh, to value Jesse's consent, she's trying to send a message or they're trying to send a message that they don't want to engage with me. So cool, I'll go talk to the other 8 billion consciousnesses in the world. Right? But I understand their initial hurt feelings because I'm like, oh my God, why'd you block me, dude? 
we could have talked, but okay, whatever, block everybody. But just because you block someone doesn't mean you ain't going to talk about them. And I think that's fair game. If I've blocked you, make a content about me and talk about me all the time, please. Thank you. Make my channel blow up by talking about me. Give me the clicks. I don't care. Uh, and Zoe B. And the thing is, people have noticed and are disappointed that very good, thorough video essayists are compromising their high standards in the interest of what is condoned by the black petty bourgeoisie. In the same way that oh, Cat Black is Everybody be petty. Says that, quote, more people are willing to give her work a chance if a white person says that it's okay or not. Cornbread Tube has done the exact same thing when it comes to black content creators in the genres of social commentary and video essay. Of course, oh, everybody be doing this. It's a clicky thing. Z's right. Everybody be doing this. We all do it. We give the people we like a chance. And then if we don't like them anymore, Right? Everybody does this. And I think, honestly, can I be real? I get it. <laughs> I get it. My channel was impacted by FD's disproportionate response to my video because it wasn't the right kind of black for him. <gasps> and Wait, she's saying petite, but her accent sounds like petty or am I crazy? Petty? Well, it wouldn't be petite bourgeois. Bouge, she would be p petty bourgeoisie petite wouldn't make sense would it i don't know if everyone was immortal and we stopped having kids could we end up getting along no we would probably stop being violent eventually but we wouldn't get along okay good people don't get along it's very normal this kindergarten one day the world could be perfect and we'd all get along is not gonna happen oh petite bourgeoisie yeah maybe yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay, noted. It's petite. Okay, I heard petty, but like my ears be bad. Um, okay, so like again, my theory, and this is a theory because we don't have evidence for this, my theory is that we would never get along. And the way I utilize this theory is by my inner circle, who I love and I will always wait for for the rest of my life. Like, you know, sometimes my siblings and I do this thing where we don't talk to each other for five years. Great, I'll see you in 10, girl. I love you, right? I love them all, right? So when I think about how we don't always get along, and I love these people. I they I love them so much. My inner circle, my chosen family, all of I love them so much. And we don't even all get along. You think it's going to work on a mass scale? Girl, let me see it. Let me see it. Of course, Cornbread Tube does something which increasingly people online are I'm sorry. I'm so hungry for cornbread, bro. I took cornbread out of my diet. I used to eat this loaf of cornbread. It was so dense and so good here in Croatia. Oh my God, it's so good. And now I'm off bread because I'm cutting. It's working. Thank you. Oh, I can see myself changing already. <sighs> I want cornbread. Getting tired of claiming or insinuating that any valid criticism directed to them is either simply racism or bigotry. Take the fascinating example of how Cornbread Tube does thumbnails or video titles. Weird, I know. Yet also one of the most subtle yet simultaneously audacious ways in which valid criticism is conveniently put onto modern day's most convenient scapegoat. White people, or rather the essentialist caricature of a white person that is all over Cornbread Tube. This was FD Signifier's original thumbnail and title for his video essay about why leftist drama is so bad in a video that was pure drama. The title has gone through several evolutions. It was originally called Broke Bread, Left Tube Has a Drama. Okay, I also changed my thumbnails and titles as you should as a YouTuber. Because it, they, YouTube literally recommends it. When you log into YouTube as a YouTuber, it's like, hey, this video is getting less views than normal. Do you want to change the thumbnail or title? Problem. Then it was, I might have a drama problem. Now it's leftist infighting almost killed me. Broke bread. Just a spoiler alert, leftist infighting and drama didn't almost kill him. He didn't have a stroke. He suffered from immense stress and a terrible migraine and panic attack. I am not downplaying. Wait, I saw that video. He did say he had a stroke. The seriousness of this, and I wish him nothing but the greatest health moving forward. However, it is starkly different to almost being killed. Note as well. Wait, wasn't that the video where he literally had to go to the doctors because he had a stroke? Uh, uh, uh. 
<clears throat> wow, the first video that comes up, if you look up, oh, no, I'm just stupid. Hold on. FD signify would find ID. This is new. The reverse panopticon. The measuring of my humanity one? and words. That was new. A few months after that video, I woke up one morning with vertigo and no explanation. I could barely stand. My friend had vertigo recently. The crystals in her ears shifted. She had to go to the doctor. They shift, guys. We have crystals in our ears that shift. Or walk for like a week and it terrified me. And I've had numerous tests and MRIs and CAT scans and everything possible you can consider to make sure there's not something going wrong in here because I am a 40 year old black man who is overweight with high blood pressure and I have two children and a wife and I am well within the range for an untimely death due to a medical calamity like so many black men around my age are and while YouTube pays well, we are not rich and we- um, He should be doing good though. He should be making at least 10K a month on his channel. He should be making at least six figures. If he's not, they're doing something wrong. Right? Like now every YouTube gets monetized differently, but he also works with sponsors. So he actually, in this video is sponsored, the one we're watching. So technically, again, like- I feel like six figures is good if you're always making six figures. Like, I don't I don't think this year I'm going to make six figures. If you guys want to help me make six figures, you guys can buy my merch or sign up for a call. Thank you. Um, but like making six figures every year is good money. Like, I'm pretty sure you could manage. Right. It won't be perfect. You won't have necessarily the nicest house anymore in America, but you'll have something. Right. But it's one of those things where like his level, like because my level in my AdSense, like if I was making his views, there's no way. My RPM would be so, I would be making so much money. Well, I'd be making a lot, six figures at least. So how is he, I know he's not rich, like wealthy, but like, okay. We are not safe. Now I hate even attempting to explain the weirdness of this, you know, circumstance because it's first world problems, even though it's something that's been repeated by every major content creator out there. And we've seen many a very successful mm -hmm. big creator stop making content for their mental health. This pressure, this depersonalization, it is something you don't understand till you've Okay, so the dilemma is that he's saying it and we all know it, but we do it to each other. So he's doing this to Kidology. And I think that's what Kidology is also trying to say is like, don't you see you're doing that to me? But the dilemma is that we all ultimately believe that like if you put yourself in this, you have to accept that it's a part of your life. And that's how you look at life. So FD Signifier can say something like this. And by the way, I don't know. I thought he had a stroke, but maybe I heard wrong. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he just had vertigo. Okay. But again, like FD can, we can say, we can say, hey, online communities, actually, it does matter. Catnip was right. It actually does matter. Studies have shown being an online content creator, being bullied online, all of this stuff matters. And maybe it's well-deserved and maybe it's not, right? But it does impact you. But when Destiny says, I don't want to change my language because I think people are too pussified or whatever, I'm paraphrasing, or Sneeko says like, oh, you're just a baby. Like you should be able to live in this sphere. It's true that the people who can make it in this sphere should, but I'm saying you don't even have to. I'm saying, yes, you're always going to get flack if you're online for sure. So get ready for that. But there are ways to curate better audiences. Now, the fact that FD can make this statement but not offer it to Kidology is just a point of values and a point of saying Kidology is not worth giving a safe space to because to be honest, she doesn't want to be around him. Not everyone, good or bad, can make a safe space for you. Again, if you're a Catholic like my mother, she doesn't want trans people or gay people around, period. Her safe space is other Catholics who are anti-gay and trans. You cannot ask FD Signifier to go out of his way to make a safe space for my mother. It wouldn't make sense, right? I don't make a safe space for my mom. Like sometimes I do, but like usually I try to make it in her home, not in mine, right? Like it's my home. Sometimes I go out of my way for my mom, but it's exhausting and I really wish I didn't have to. And then when I don't feel like it, I don't do it, right? So you're not going to get it every time. Humanizing people doesn't mean going, bending over backwards to make them feel comfortable. It means recognizing that they also have feelings and also recognizing that you're not responsible for them. Sometimes you got to figure it out on your own, kids. Sometimes the world isn't for you. I 
a gr- like that's why I was telling Catnip like you don't have to be in Destiny's sphere. You can talk to everyone he talks to because Destiny doesn't own these people, right? I don't want to give in to Mr. Girl's theory here. That's why when Destiny viewers come to me and they're like, "Why are you still talking to people who know Destiny?" I was like, "Don't you know you're per- like you're perpetuating Mr. Girl's like whole accusation towards Destiny is that we're not allowed to talk to people who know Destiny without being secretly trying to get to Destiny." Like Destiny's own fans are so brain dead sometimes that they don't understand. Like, I don't even agree with Mr. Girl. But if some of Destiny's fans literally think you're not allowed to talk to people who know Destiny, right? That's what Mr. Girl is trying to say. And I hate that they're proving his point because I think Mr. Girl lied in his manifesto about Destiny, which frustrated me. Because I don't think Destiny is doing it for more than like trauma reasons. I don't think he's actually like well he's sort of manipulative but he's not like any more manipulative than any other content creator but the point is again what I'm trying to say is okay listen (sighs) everyone can talk about everybody not everyone wants to create a safe space for them I don't create a safe space for cheaters usually I create a safe space for people who have cheated or people who are even ongoingly cheating but their cheating is not the safe space right? I'm not going to stop making jokes or being like, how is the married man you're sleeping with? Like, I'm going to poke at you every time I see you. How's the affair that you're going? Like, how's the affair going? You know what I mean? Because you don't get a safe space for your cheating in my house. But you get a safe space, meaning I'm not going to like actually think you're like the worst person ever. I'm going to make jokes with you and love you. But also I'm going to call you out based off my own values. And if you don't like the atmosphere, it's not for you. But you can't come into my home and expect me just to, mm-hmm, yeah, ooh, okay, listen to you as you destroy families and expect me just to be chilling. Cool hoodie. Thank you, Hada. Merch is out. Merch is out. It's out. It's out. So FD in this video acknowledges that being a content creator is very emotionally taxing. Kidology is saying, I'm being emotionally taxed. And FD and these people are doing it. And I'm saying everyone's doing it to each other. Everyone is doing it to each other. Everyone is doing it to each other. So at the end of the day, you got to go home to the bubble that makes sense to you. This is my bubble. I love my audience. I love my space on YouTube. People can come in and out of my bubble. I block some people. Like I block Mr. Girl and I block Lav. I don't want to talk to them, right? Because like they distort the uh, truth way too much. And it's not even through the lens of a bubble. They don't have it. It's just too crazy, right? So again, everybody's doing it differently. But we're all doing it. We are all doing it. And now the decision is how. And that's why it sounds dishonest when Catnip comes on and she go, they go, um, I'm not in it for views or like necessarily like collabing for number. Don't enter this space then. This space, we're all doing this for a job. You are entering into a competitive company and we're here for views and money because we want to make this our living forever, which means we have to invest. So if you're here for activism, join an activism bubble. This is not it. No one in this space is an activist. FD Signifier and those people, they're activists. They raise money. Hassan is more of an activist. Join that bubble. But joining the debate bubble, debaters are not activists. They're debaters. Don't join that bubble. You know what I'm saying? But it's not for the activism. It is probably for views and stuff, right? Because that would be the only logical, if they're not doing it for that reason, then they're just not, it's not smart. It's not efficient. Why would you enter a space that's so hostile if it's not for views? It makes no sense. Been through. Okay, let's go back to Kidology's video. Well, the symbolism of the original artwork. FD, an innocent black content creator and victim, dragged and manipulated into drama by all these pesky white people wanting a piece of him. This was foreign man in a foreign land. Okay, but that is true, right? FD is consistently poked by people who do not understand his position or who he is, right? And it's usually by these white people who want to debate him, but they don't even understand him enough to humanize him. So why would he engage with them when his audience doesn't even like these people? And if he engages with people like Destiny, it's going to bring in a lot of vile and horrible comments to his comment sections. Why would FD talk to Destiny? It would be so, like... The toxicity levels would get so bad on FD's channel, just like it is every time Destiny goes against anyone he disagrees with. So why would he do it? Except to raise money for a charity. And what did Destiny do instead? You guys told me he gave 10K to cops. So FD's right about Steven. Steven proves people right about him all the time and goes, why don't people want to talk to me? 
I don't understand where the disconnect is with these bubbles. Like, how do you all not see it? But then again, bubbles, you know what I'm going to do. What are you going to do? It's like uh, uh, Jordan Peterson being like, I told you, Ethan, your audience was going to turn on you. You guys are so wrong about Ethan and his audience. The conservatives are so dumb. I love you all so much. God bless you. Ethan's audience didn't turn against him. Ethan's audience was always the same audience. Ethan misunderstood his own audience, but mostly they they misunderstood him. They didn't turn on him. They misunderstood. There was a miscommunication, a genuine miscommunication and so much pain and hurt that they can't do anything but lash out. It's very different than them turning on him. They didn't turn on him they feel so rejected and hurt that they misunderstood him which means they misunderstood themselves because they were the ones who vouched for ethan which means they made the bad decision not ethan it's like when we date people and we hate those people because we're like oh i dated the shittiest person exactly you dated the shittiest person rip to not them but you for staying with that shitty person that's the point, you know? Hold on. I saw a comment. I disagree. I think it varies. There are definitely some activists or people doing it because the issues matter to them. Like uh, Brianna Wu is like a good example of that. But Brianna Wu isn't really in the debate space as often, right? Like she doesn't primarily do that, but she is primarily an act. I say Brianna Wu is an activist more than a debater. But the people that are debaters are not really activists, right? And when I say activist, I mean like, Somebody who makes it their central, like I was at protests every week as an activist. Like I was literally raising money. I was canvassing. I was doing all a bunch of stuff. So like when I was doing it, I was like actively in it. I couldn't, I, there's no way you would be on the internet 12 hours a day if you're an activist, like unless you're activizing through your, so again, I don't know what we all describe as activists, but I'm saying someone who centralizes their work around activism, like Brianna Wu, which is different, Right. He gave money to the cops. Oh, yeah. Okay. You guys are explaining it to hate. I got it. Um, not going to lie. It's weird how uh, in all nearly. The, oh, wait. Hold on. One. I'm not going to lie. It is weird how nearly all these Destiny Bridge burns. Destiny is the victim. That's weird. However, he intentionally engages with the controversial and insane people. So it's unsurprising. It's because he can never be wrong. Right? That's the only reason. And his audience. Have you ever noticed that even in my comments, his audience is like, I don't understand why why Brittany isn't allowed to criticize Destiny. And everyone's like, why are you doing that? Why are you criticizing him? They don't they don't like it. They don't like people coming for him. And they always say, I wish you could see him better. And I really think they're just projecting themselves onto him. Like they must identify with him too much because you guys don't even understand. It's all cope. Right. Like Destiny and in this space goes, um, Women are so sensitive. They're fucking like, they're literally like so sensitive. I'm never talking to rape victims again. They're also in their emotions. They're all trauma victims. And then literally I said, you are like Sneeko. And he was like, Rah! like freaking out. And I was like, um, what is happening? Like, what is, I am still blindsidedly like, what are you doing? You ho. Don't, don't come at me and say your queen that can never be criticized can handle criticism. The man couldn't handle being compared to Sneeko. Why not? What's the big deal? What are you talking about, right? It's bullshit. It's a cope. So people are like, I wish you would see Destiny more. I wish you would see him better. Um, Ma'am, okay, does he even see himself? And then just, okay, I don't want to hear it. Like, please burn the bridge because I compared him to Sneeko. That's all that was. It was about nothing else. He never reached out to me. He never DM'd me. We were literally fine. And then I said one thing and he freaked out on me. What the fuck? And I'm the one who's mentally ill? Girl, at least I know I'm struggling. Well, I'm in remission now, but you know what I mean. You know, my girl, please. Okay. Oh, catnip's here. You hear me talk about you? <laughs> I think to be an effective activist, to make sure you're effectively fighting for your causes and getting the full picture, listening or engaging in some debates or at least panels, I think is important. Yes. But who are you debating? Nazis? Because I don't think that's very helpful. But you do you. His original thumbnail and title on a video in which he disingenuously goes after the internet's largest transgender streamer. Kef oh. Isn't activism usually going into a bubble to try to change it? Maybe? 
I see activism as, yes, that could be a part of it, but I see activism as picking a cause and doing activity on behalf of cause. That's how I see activism, as picking a cause, like you would say veganism, and you would say, I'm going to fight for the animals, so they're my cause, and I'm going to do activity based off this cause, and it's going to be my activism. But it it could, and that could involve, hold on, that could involve going into a bubble and trying to change it. Yes. But the activism itself doesn't have need the bubble to change for it to exist. Does that make sense? Debaters are closer to politicians than activists. Yet, yeah, okay, yes, because debaters want to win lose. Activists have like a, a a value. Activists are saying this is my value. Debaters are saying I want to win. Politicians are saying I want to win, and I will pretend to be activists to win or get brownie points. Right. So I would say activists, when I think of activists, they're coming from an actual moral or value perspective, which is why when activists are fake, it's so disheartening. Or when activists are liars, like the BLM organization, for them to steal money from people that was meant to help black um, communities. That's so bad because, oh, my God, you're like a politician. Activists, to be fair, are now sort of the bad ones in camp with politicians and streamers right activists don't want to win it's a different kind of win guys it's a different kind of win okay it, it's a different kind of win one's made off of pride and one's made out of hopefully a sense of justice for the world a sense of good that's very specific like religious activism in my mind most of it that I see is actually because they're pushing a narrative of good, right? They In their head, it's not about winning. It's about they think they're literally right. But a lot of debaters don't even care. They're not invested in the topic. They just want to be right. Politicians aren't even invested. They just want to be right. You know what I mean? Like, again, all things are true and at all times. So don't black and white it. Guys, use some nuance here, right? Like the nuance is... Okay, the macro, mm, the way my brain works is like you view it as the different categories. Politicians are not activists. Yes, do we all agree? Why aren't they the same? And yes, why are they the same? These things are both things that happen at once. They are both not the same and both in some ways the same, right? How can you be an activist if you're not trying to win? What's your end goal? Winning is different than changing hearts and minds. Some activists go for the winning strategy through politics. Some activists stay away from the winning strategy and go for changing hearts and minds, which is different than the strategy of winning through politics, meaning to create a law, whether people like it or not, right? In this case, he went after her for being in rehab. You see, uh I knew the c strong with him as soon as he said blocks. I'm not surprised that he said. I'm not surprised. After backlash, backlash which in my opinion would not have been the case this time last year, which shows you how things are starting to change and how people are starting to put two and two together. He quietly changed the title and thumbnail after it wouldn't disrupt the algorithm too much. Of course, yes, we all do that. Every YouTuber does that. You should do that. Mr. Beast makes two. No, he makes five. Five thumbnails. I make like three thumbnails just to see what will work. And I think that's normal. You should do that. If you're going to be good at this job, you should change the thumbnail and title so the algorithm won't get upset with you. This is a good thing. Ren, three months a member. Let's go. Just order the humans. Get a human pullover. Green is such a perfect color. Um, go order your merch, y'all. Thank you so much. Woo! I hope it looks good. Can you show me what the green looks like when you get it? Because I only have the black one. I'm so curious. And remember, the cool thing about this company is that if anything is wrong, if the color is not to your liking, if anything looks not to your liking, switch it out. They have great customer service. And if you get any other colors than black, guys, let me know how it looks because I am so curious. I kind of want to start collecting all the different colors. <laughs> 
I have I have just the black one right now, but I would love one of the other colors. Oh, I'm so excited to see them all. I have to pay for my own merch, though. So you see how that works? If I want more merch, I have to pay for it. So, you know. <laughs> oh, how exciting. I'm so stoked. Thank you so much. There are more colors. Yes. There are options and colors for uh, the sweaters. And I hope that you guys have fun exploring. But the black is always basic because, you know, it's great. It goes with everything. That's why I always get black. I get black everything. My partner goes, what kind of shoes you want? Black. What kind of sweaters? Black. Everything's black in my house. I really got to expand my wardrobe, bro. You know? When enough time passed and the video became old news, he changed it right back. Now, there was something which I noticed in my weeks long analysis and deep dive into the content of the black petty bourgeoisie. The people they critique and outright despise the most are the very same people who they have the most in common with, radical, guilt-ridden white liberals. On the other hand, the people they claim and I think genuinely believe themselves to be representing and to stand hand in hand with are the very people they have the least in common with. That is the average black voter, the average person of color who is typically very religious, socially conservative, especially in values surrounding Founding sexuality, immigration, and policing. Why I say that cornbread tube is so white is because, well, they are. These Oh, okay. Mm. 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 You're right, Kay. Oh, you're right, Kay. I'll put the merch uh, link on a pinned comment. I think I have Elvin's music right now. Hmm. Okay, she's making an interesting argument, and this is the bubbles. This is a very bubbly thing. It's not, time is not linear. Bubbles aren't linear, but she's very right in the trajectory of the political bubble. White people have more privilege in time to be more modern and less religious. So they do engage in alternative lifestyles at a higher rate than black people. And they do engage in LGBT issues at a higher rate than black people. But as, but let me tell you, there is a thriving LGBT community that is black and they are getting more prominent, but they are technically behind their white peers in terms of convincing their parents to be more accepting though there's a big swing back around so it's going to be interesting to see what happens but I will say cornbread tube is going to be out of touch with people on the ground because all youtubers who spend way too much time online will all of us myself included like, let's be real with you guys. I don't know how much the BDSM scene has changed. I haven't been in a long time. I don't know how the things have shifted, even like with nudist events. Like, I don't know how the vibe is now. It's probably way different than I was there five years ago. If you're not actively in these groups to see all the shifts and new generations coming in, you're going to be disconnected. So as somebody who like lives her life online right now, there's no way that I'm not also disconnected, right? And so you, like I use my family and friends to ground myself to see what they're doing. But even they are kind of like not in all these bubbles. So I can't blame FT Signifier and all these people who spend all this time on live not being connected. But also I don't know what they do in their free time. But I'm going to assume they're chronically online like the rest of us. So to be fair. Yes. Kidology is right. Tubers dislike white liberals as much as white liberals dislike themselves. These cornbread tubers, like their white liberal counterparts, espouse mm. attitudes and policy preferences that are largely unrepresentative of the marginalized communities whose will they claim to represent. They espouse the same luxury beliefs as their white liberal counterparts. They advocate for the same social and gender identity issues as as their white liberal counterparts. Even though black and Asian Democrats and liberals mm -hmm. are, for instance, greatly more supportive of restrictive immigration policies and are more- But I just want to make it clear. As an Assyrian, I don't want my parents to be more white to accept my gayness. I would need them to be not religious, which is not something I want for them because they would be very unhappy, right? So 
I want to make it clear that she's right politically, but spiritually, and even like, not to be, again, no one's a monolith. So even like black gay people aren't having the same experience as white gay people. So, and they're probably not having it because of like generational curses, but also white people have their own thing, but it's different, like not feeling close to their family or as connected to them versus like, I feel like a lot of people of color feel connected to their family. They just feel like so connected, it hurts. And white people feel so disconnected, it hurts. It's like a different, but the voting, of course, like, of course, like th this is very complicated actually. Um, Cause it's one of the issues I have with like, even protecting religious groups in general, because if you protect a religious group, you're basically not protecting LGBT people, right? And so the dilemma is like, I want to protect everybody, but I can't all the time. And if I had to pick and choose, of course, I'd prefer a world with LGBT people over religious people. But then most of the people who are religious are my family or like conservatives. Like obviously my life is easier when I'm not around conservatives. Like if you voted for Trump, you're making my life harder. You're annoying me. You know what I mean? And at the same time, if you go outside of the lens of America, like they're the same Trump and Biden. If you go outside the lens of like the universe, they're the same. So for me, I understand what she's saying, but I feel like it is complex. I feel like it's a little like this is like not even just two bubbles anymore. This is like a thousand bubbles mixed into all the like cohabitation of those bubbles. So it's really not easy. I don't think it's as simple as to say that cornbread tube is white like their counterparts because they're not white like white people are it's different but it looks similar but it's not the same still because they're still black and they're coming from that perspective which means it's a different bubble automatically likely to be pro-israel than pro-palestine i'll return to this in more depth in my chapter on luxury belief and remember that i feel like there's a shift in culture where white people want to be cool like black people so white Gen Zers who are progressive will vote with the loudest people of color voices than the average. Who is the average now? I don't even know who the average is anymore. That's why she compared them. Yeah, it's interesting. Catnip, Brittany, can I draw a fan art of you with bubbles? I mean, I'm down. You don't have to ask my permission to join, like draw a fan art of me. That's awesome. I love it. Tag me. A term coined by psychologist Rob Henderson to describe the growing oh, I've watched this guy. status symbol of beliefs that confer social status on bourgeois mm. folks like FD and friends or radical white liberals from affluence. Whilst ironically, the costs of these luxury beliefs are inflicted on and are borne by the lower classes. I got kids to feed, We got kids to feed. What are they doing? As I demonstrated okay. by my own personal example of having my career shaken by F. Ooh. D's power to determine who is welcome and who isn't in the that, she didn't make the point though I'm so sorry I can't let this go she didn't make the point there were no receipts there was no proof there was only a guess this is the problem how is this am I missing the argument from her FD signifier's power didn't shake her career there's no way that just YouTube doesn't work that way it's she would be the it, does it work that way and I've never been it never works that way for anyone I know so I want to know what does she mean? What are the receipts from that? She didn't show analytics. I didn't see anything. Like I love Z and I consider her a friend, but I also like just because we're friends doesn't mean I can't criticize you, which is why I criticize Sneeko and Destiny, bitch. And kid, like I can't let this go. I feel like I'm missing something. Like this doesn't make sense for her to say that online black community other black outliers and i have routinely had our work our opinions and our experiences not only excluded but ridiculed we yes, because you're not in the bubble and you're not allowed to be there it doesn't make sense for you to join that bubble it's not your kind of black people like black people aren't a monolith so wanting to be again this part is like lacking for me because again it's like her saying I want to be part of this group and they won't let me in the click. Yeah, you can't sit with us. It's like they're the mean girls and I don't know why you want to sit with the mean girls. 
Start your own progressive wing. That's what Destiny did. He's a alleged progressive, but he's not progressive like FD Signifier, but FD Signifier won't talk to Destiny. So Kidology has to make her own wing. Is she even a progressive? F like, Z isn't a progressive, is she? Oh God, no, I don't know. I never, she never comes off as a progressive to me. So I don't know. I never, because she's apolitical, so she can't be a progressive, right? So why does she want to sit with political people? See, this is why they don't believe she's apolitical. Why do you want the pro approval of political activists and political YouTubers, but call yourself apolitical? It doesn't make sense. Your lived experience won't be validated by people who don't see you. So FD Signifier doesn't see you, he won't validate it. But also it makes no sense to want the validation from somebody. I don't think so. Maybe she means power in the sense that FD has, uh, I can't see the word because of, let me emoji here has unc status largely in cornbread tube what's unc maybe it's the corner of youtube i'm in but i feel like i've seen kidology more as of late yeah she's popping but like these are the questions yeah like i want to know what she means by all of this yeah that part is lacking but nearly everything else she's been saying i agree with yeah yeah her video is great it's a great video but it's pointing out something that only exists within the construct of the bubble she's engaging with if she just left the bubble it wouldn't exist anymore but she wants the bubble to see that she's in pain, but the bubble can't see she's in pain because they won't see that they're both in pain. But also we do this to each other all the time. Oh, uncle. Oh, has uncle status? Learned? Yeah, but like she's not going to win. She can't come in because she's not one of them. But isn't there a whole bubble about saying how black people are a monolith by excluding black people who aren't them by saying they aren't black? Uh, but isn't there a whole bubble about saying how black people are a monolith by excluding black people who aren't them? Well, everyone thinks, everyone thinks they treat people like individuals. But if your group is collective, you don't. The moment I'm in a queer group, we are literally saying we are a group. The moment I'm with my girlies and my gays, we are calling ourselves basically like a monolith. The moment you say I'm fighting for blackness, you're saying I'm a monolith. I'm fighting for these kinds of black people, obviously, because kidology is excluded, right? But of course, by proxy, hold on, they'll think they're also helping kidology because she's black, so she'll win in the end too. There's a thing here. It's like she wants to be seen as a consciousness by a group of people that don't even have the time to see themselves as a consciousness, right? Because they can't. Because they're fighting as a group. Again, let's go back to my chart. How do I bring it up for you guys? Uh, You know, sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. And I can't, I haven't figured out exactly why it works sometimes and it doesn't. So on the, okay, hold on. Let me just fucking try to do it. Let's try to do it. Let's try to do it. Uh, oh, I remember. No, I did do it. Oh, I'm so smart. Look at me, Brittany. Okay, I actually figured it out. Okay, so on the macro, we're all like little energy balls in the universe clashing up against each other. Then as a society, so I'm going to micro this down as a as a as the society in this example will be the FD signifier bubble as society. Okay, so the society in this example is FD signifier in his bubble. This society of black activists and YouTubers fighting for their society and the individuals within it is Kidology. And Kidology is like, hi, I'm an individual in your bubble. And they're like, cool, either adhere to and follow the rules of society or you get kicked out. And she's like, but I'm, I already live in this society. Why are you kicking me out? And they're like, um, because you're not like us. So either get on board or get the fuck out. And she's like, oh, um, but I want to stay here. And they're like, cool, get on board or get the fuck out. Like if you lived in Japan, get on board or get the fuck out, right? And she's like, ooh, but I want to be an individual in the society. And they're like, yes, you can be, but only if you're an individual like us. And she's like, yeah, but I want to be my own individual. But she's not ready to be a, a specific consciousness, right? So she is still an individual looking for a bubble and she keeps trying to go for this bubble. And I'm saying, or you can find a different bubble that actually validates you because FD Signifier is nobody in the world. He's just somebody in this bubble. He's nobody, but he's just somebody, right? Like the world doesn't know him. YouTube knows him, barely. 
it's not the same thing. There are so many other black content creators you could appeal to. But for some reason, she's like, I want to be a part of this bubble. And I'm just putting, um, I'm putting an assumption on her work based off of her saying she, 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 she's using herself too much as a personal example. So I'm assuming she wants to be in the group. That's what I'm getting, right? Okay. She's like, why won't you accept me? Why won't you accept me? Because their society isn't about you specifically, your category of black woman. They don't care about you. In the same way, religious people don't care about black trans or gay people. Or religious people like in a black religious bubble or a white religious bubble. They don't care about you. They don't. They literally fight against your civil rights and want to take away your jobs and deny you children. They don't care about you. And FD Signifier is trying to tell you, he's trying to signify to you, he doesn't care about you. And you're like, care about me. No. So you have to be an individual in a different bubble that cares about you or decide to be more introspective and go to the specific consciousness. Right? So I'm saying you can't ask this bubble to change to fit you. It was never for you. But the bubble does admit it's not for you. They're saying it. But they're also saying, but even though it's not for you, it's for all black people because they believe, because they're dumb and they're humans, that if they win, it's going to benefit all black people because they think that what they're doing is the superior plan. In the same way, my mom thinks if everyone is Catholic, everyone will be benefited, even the gays. Even though if you're Catholic, you can't practice, in quotation marks, being gay. We all think if we win, if our ideas win out, It must have been the best idea and it will help everyone, even if through this process, it doesn't look like we're fighting for you. So my only issue so far with the way Kidology is phrasing everything is she's putting way too much power into FD's hands and playing way too far into his bubble. And she herself is putting him on a pedestal. I never think about FD Signifier. I never think about him. I never think about that bubble except to watch it and enjoy it from afar. I never think my life is like I never think Anything about my life matters because of FD Signifier. Also, I'm not black. But if I was black, you know who I wouldn't try to appeal to? People who don't see me. Right? But it hurts to be rejected. And so I see why she's making the video because she's making a great point, which is not the point she's actually making, but it's going to be my point. You have to hang out in the bubble that sees you. Everything is bubbles. And this bubble is not going to see Kidology. They just won't do it. So they can't actually see the consciousness that she is. And even if they slightly could, they don't have a place for her at the barbecue. They don't know where to put her at the table. Who do they sit her next to? Because everyone they sit her next to, she's going to piss somebody off. Right? In the same way that somebody hosts a dinner, let's say, at a con and doesn't invite certain people because they don't know where to put them at the table. (laughs) It's just what it is. When I, okay, even me, When I have a social gathering, if it's with my religious family, I'm not inviting certain friends of mine because I wouldn't want to put my friends through that. But I love my family and they accept me, but they're going to be dicks to my friends, right? And I don't ditch my family, but I just prioritize my friends like when I'm with them. And I wouldn't like, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying bubble hop because it's better if you're going to be this much of an individual who doesn't adhere to the bigger bubble. But if you're going to adhere to the bigger bubble, find the bubble you want to adhere to and be like, right? I'm not enough like any bubble to stay long term. I got to hop around and come back to my bubble because I'm too, like like I said, I would love to hang out with FD Signifier. I would love to hang out with like TwitchCon people. I would love to hang out with, I could get along with everybody, but I'm not hanging out long term with any of you and I'm most certainly not fighting your fights. Your fights are not my fights. So this is what I'm getting, this is the vibe I'm getting from Kidology, right? But she's making a great point for people in the bubble. The dilemma is that, again, it's not the same bubble. Same way that left white white feminism isn't black feminism. Like, white feminism is a specific bubble.